welcome to another show of the Mini Arcade Show. I am your host, uh, Me Spirit Moon, with my co-host, my host Gonzo. Hey, Gonzo, how's it going? Uh, meh for a while, uh, but I guess this is all right. Yeah, it's going all right. I was disappointed about us canceling the last show. Hey, why did you explain to the, to the fans real quick? Apparently, I had some unexpected visitors. <sighs> Well, uh, there was some minor technical difficulties as some people we were supposed to be on the show didn't get to respond or wasn't even prepared. And in fact, um, everybody was kind of unprepared and uh, we just couldn't continue the show, really. Um, oh. We tried to guess, we tried yesterday. That uh, Mean Spirit had a prior engagement to go to that would take up a lot at the time. Oh. So we just decided to hold it today. Oh well. Plus, uh, not only that, um, uh, during the past few weeks I was having some issues with a microphone. I ended up having to buy some new ones and. Uh, as you can tell, it doesn't sound like me. It makes me sound a little far away, doesn't it? Well, anyways, um, while Mean Spirit's out and about, I might as well suggest this right now. That way, um, I might as well get do it for him. There is supposed to be... Um, hold on, sorry. There will be a fundraiser going on to bring a brony convention... To La to Los Angeles, California. <clears throat> mean Spirit and uh, uh, I'm sorry. Blah. What about me? Uh, sorry. You wanted me to tell him about the fundraiser to bring a Brony convention to Los Angeles, right? Yeah, Los Angeles. Call Equestria, uh, L.A. Yes, and um, who was it that was raising the funds? Um, Rhea Chan, the, vo the famous voice actress. Oh, you, yes. The one that you pretty much heard from Newgrounds? Yes, and she is... And, no, excuse me. Ugh. Cherry Coke pretty much doesn't do well for burps. Anyways, Rena Chan is, yeah, on Newgrounds, on YouTube. She appeared as Twilight and Pinkie Pie on the Equestrian Epic Meal Time. Um, she's very talented. Um, she's right now make she's right now getting the funds ready for a convention in L.A. You know, and, I mean, it's almost, almost like the uh, you know the Birmingham they're having over in uh, New New Jersey, but uh, they're actually raising money for this, so it should be interesting. But I mean, you could go, you could actually YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but you could Google uh, Equestria L.A. And it'll give you all the information you need to, if you want to put, you know, put money down. Uh, the kickbacker uh, deal is actually it's a, it's a very fun deal. You actually get uh, nice little gifts for actually donating money to them. So uh, I highly suggest, uh, you know, I highly suggest uh, googling it to make sure that um, it's everything that, you know, you can get your money's worth out of for donating because that's how we are. You know, that's even how you know they are. Um, always willing to get back to communities for people who are willing to donate into it but I mean besides that um, you can also you can also go on Facebook and find them on there uh, I've been in contact with Rhea Chan herself uh, she's uh, actually I told her I was going to help her out and hopefully uh, everyone everything works out I can actually uh, do is um, advertise for her and maybe get uh, close coverage uh, can you handle the rest Gonzo? Hmm? can you handle the rest of that? I was about to go into something else. Cause <laughs> go ahead. Uh, speaking of growing conventions, Mean Spirit did mention about the one that's going to be held at Secaucus, New Jersey, around the end of June and the beginning of July, about June 30th, uh, July 1st. Because of popular demand and because of my own personal reasons, and I'm hoping that everyone but I will be making an appearance there at BronyCon in Sakakis. 
if all goes well, according to a friend who's willing to drive me there, sparing me the 200 as something bus ticket and possibly uh, trying to track down a friend just so I can stay at his house and avoid a hotel and whatnot. Um, I will be traveling there with some friends that the Inverted Shadow knows and making my appearances at BronyCon. And um, if you're heading there as well, be on the lookout. I'll, pss, I'll see if I can find something in my small little wardrobe that'll pss, set me apart from the crowd. And, uh, oh yeah, the Inverted Shadow will be there. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, there will be a G... Well, Gonzo, we kind of lost you there for a minute. Hold on a second. I think we just have a little technical difficulties right now. Hold on a second, folks. Hey, Gonzo, you're back? Uh, what happened? What happened to you? I have no idea. Was it me? Did it? How, how much did everybody uh, said? Uh, the last we missed out on the last thirty seconds. What the hell? Oh God! Oh, don't worry about it. Just continue on. Keep on going. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, anyways, let me let me just say, let me just try to say that not only will I be appearing at BronyCon in Secaucus, New Jersey, Inverted Shadow would be there as well. The Inverted Shadow, many of you have known him. He's a brony. He's also one of the best G modders um, that I have became personally involved with, and uh, he will be at the G mod panel too, along with a few of his friends. <laughs> the uh, part, some of the uh, people from uh, Team Shadow, as he likes to call it. Yeah, because I'm because I'm a little bit a part of it too. Since I became since I began. Um, Starting making GMod videos myself. It's, oh yeah, it's, it's 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 in the rough, but I'm slowly working my way to as um, good as Shadow. Um, well, uh, yeah, it's, everybody everybody wish. <laughs> no, it's not all that bullshit. It's actually a great deal because no, 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 no. It's, the, if you if you if, if you really th if you really think about it, what he does and what people do for Pixar are similar, same thing with their with their 3D in, uh, uh, imaging deal. If you think about it. Someone similar, but it's on the basic levels. Oh shit! Barely hear me. I can fix that problem real quick. I I tell you, this mic sucks. No. I, I cannot wait. Un no, hang on. Now I can speak now. Hello. There we go. I tell you, this mic sucks. No, it doesn't suck. It's the levels I put it up as. So, I gotta keep an eye on the levels. Anyways, um, uh, sorry. Go on. Anyways, just short. I'll be appearing at BronyCon, BronyCon in New Jersey. Inverted Shadow will be there. And um, all you got to do is, if you happen to be in J New Jersey, stop on by the convention. I'll make sure that I'll make myself, um, you know, appear out of the crowd because I'm weird like that. And um, just 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 look for a big tattoo that says uh, "Tumblr nerd" on his forehead. There won't be, for God's sakes. Oh, don't worry. Me and Irv, in, uh, in, uh, inverted actually talked about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's gonna be tattooed I'll... right there. <laughs> I'd rather not be, you know. Um... Gonzo, I guarantee, I guarantee you one thing. Oh, um, the Flutter Knife says I'll be making a shirt for Gonzo. Oh yes, make, yeah, we're making a T-shirt for you. People are going to recognize you for who you really are, and yeah, but... that that's going to be a surprise. We're not going to tell you what it is. It's a surprise T-shirt. Um, it's actually it it fits your criteria, and you'll be the only one that actually has this T-shirt. Uh, will this be shipped to my address, or will I have to hunt around for it at BronyCon? Oh no, no, it'll be shipped to you. Okay, uh, Flutter, I better get Flutter not my address. Um, I may have to do it. I may have to do the shipping. Sh uh, shipping. Yeah. Oh, she said she'll ship it to you. Okay. 
You know, I'll have to, you better find a, sh- a, shirt, a shirt place to actually want to put that picture on there. So, anyways, um, let's get back to the subject at hand. Um, there's a yes. few. There's a few things uh, I want to bring up besides the entire question. Uh, question, question in L.A. Uh, you know, they always are looking for more money. That means more money. It means more celebrities, more more time with your favorite voice actors, voice actresses. Uh, yada yada yada. You know, the whole entire. You know, more time for for it. So instead of being like one day or a few hours, it could be like a whole entire weekend to a whole week. More money means more into it. And Rhea Chan, to what I've heard and what I've read, she throws some of the best uh, cons out there. I mean, like the, the you know, like conventions, the best conventions there is. So it's something we actually look for. You know, everybody can look forward to. Um, so. Uh, yeah, exactly, and that means if we if more money comes with it, you know, we because come on, we need we, we need our cupcake money, man. Okay. <laughs> we need our cupcake money. She needs Rich Chan needs your cupcake money. Do not put this up for me. I need it. <laughs> so basically, in a nutshell, give out more money, you get more ponies. Exactly. So just remember, cupcake money equals ponies. So, but. Money yeah. makes the world go round, and money makes the ponies move. Hey, you never know. You might, we might even get the grim dark voices in there too. <laughs> no, we're staying away from the cupcake booth. <laughs> Gonzo to do little Miss Rarity voice. Uh, you do know I pitch it, right? I try to pitch it naturally, but uh, I have to do it the rest of the way up, you know. But uh, anyways. Anyways, yeah. So. Hey. Let's get back to the show here. Um, also, yes. another subject I also want to bring up, and which I don't mind actually bringing this up at all, is, you know, we're in Tumblr, we're all considered being a family. You know, we all have the people who we run to, you know, when we're in trouble. We all have, you know, our times that we are being made fun of or trolled. But the thing is, just remember, don't give in to the people who put you down who basically throw throw you around saying that you're no good or anything like that? Ignore them. But you know why? It's because it's not it's not them you should be worried about. It's your, you know the only one opinion matters if you're for your artwork, your writing, or anything like that. It's yours, and your friends are going to support you no matter which way it goes. You could trust their opinion compared to the complete strangers. You know, take a, a stranger's advice with a grain of salt, with an extra shot of penicillin. So, that's my suggestion. But also, you know, you need to. Do, uh, you know, oh, Time Master, why? We don't want to manipulate people into someone committing suicide. Uh, he thinks uh, that I hate him. Although, really, I believe he might. I believe he might be a little bit right on one thing because one of the guests, unfortunately, is a victim of one nasty Time Master and Time Master planned. Um, how should I say this? Let's just say that one of our guests has fell victim to the Time Master's plans. No, I already knew that part. But suicide is never a good, never, never the answer for anything unless you're, well, I don't say your purpose is complete, but then if your purpose is complete, then you're supposed to automatically die uh, by not commit suicide. But that's a whole different type of situation, and I don't want to get into uh, your... Yeah, let's, that, let's, that, let's, that will go into any, any criteria of, of philosophy, but that's... The yeah, um, why don't we just... Why don't we just, uh, you know, get that out back? Well, Time Master, and, if you uh, want us to hate you, okay, we hate you. Let's get on with it, okay? Anyways, <laughs> you know, we we Let's hate we hate we hate you with our all our guts, and we'll we'll basically we'll basically rub our ass on your grave when you die. But that's besides the point. Okay, moving along. Yeah. Uh, well, let's get. What do we do? Do you have our first guest, really? Uh, I believe so. Uh, Miss, I guess uh, Lustville, uh, something like that. I can't even pronounce it correctly. Oh, never... Lustville, the Queen of Hime. Yep. Or yeah, just Equina Hime. Yep. Um I did take a look at some of the blogs. Um he does both um both blogs. Um his pony sona is pretty much just a pony with I'm afraid something inhibiting it, I remember. To a certain um, point. Yeah, and um the, he, uh, he does uh, safe for work and uh, not and not safe for work and he he pretty much throws everything in there. Last time I checked, he was actually working on a, uh, a contest uh, for a yeah. calendar. I think it got postponed till like midnight tomorrow.
tomorrow or something like that. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but he's making he's actually making a calendar, so I think it's quite interesting. I think it's worth people looking into into the contest and hopefully throw some more like uh, their artwork into it and hopefully gets you know get submitted and actually help them out in the, in the whole entire way. Because I think it looks pretty good. I mean, even though it's a lot of not safe work and uh, yeah. Anyways, moving along. So let's get him online. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the show. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And yourself? Oh, I'm doing quite well. Got the show going and everything's going honky dory peachy ichi. Oh, wonderful. So. Bored. <laughs> uh, I, I have one thing to say about that. Boot to the head. No. <laughs> and another one for Jenny and the Wimp. <laughs> I remember that video. <laughs> oh god, I remember that. I remember seeing that. Great that. video, I have to say. It was a great video. I love it. I couldn't stop watching it, but over and over and over again. <sighs> so. Anyways. Getting back to uh So tell us a little about yourself. Yeah. About myself. Alright. Well, I'm 21. I live in California. Oh, another Californian. You live in California? Yeah, I do. I live in California. Wait a minute. I thought you live somewhere else. No, I live in Murphy, California. Murphy? Murphy. Uh, Riverside County. Ah, uh, okay, cool. Uh, you? Uh, Bay Area. Bay Area. You know, I've actually taken a lot of vacations up that way before with my family. It's a lovely place. <laughs> So, okay, you're 21, live in California. Go on. Yes. All right. Um, I love ponies. What can I say? <laughs> well, that's right. You are a brownie. All be- right. Um, Since you are a brownie, might as well toss some questions out to you when you're done. Okay. Well, let's see. I'm a guitarist on the side. I love playing music. That's always a wonderful thing. Mm. Uh, I'm a working part-time. Uh, renting a room for my friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a grand question to tell, really. Some guy. So, <clears throat> tell us uh, a little bit about your whole pony, uh, pony persona that you uh, you came up with. A queen of Um, simple. Uh, she's an Earth mare from Mirazaki Clapan. She's a samurai. I've always had, a, for some reason, some sort of obsession with samurai culture. It's bewitching to me. And she is indeed a bit hindered by something that has followed her for a very, very long time. She's in the middle of a dire sort of thing, and she's come to fall on Ponyville. Basically, the same universe as the Pink and Me Era. Pink and Me and Diane Pie? That's correct. Basically, a fallen down, just broken area of what Ponyville used to be. And the reason she's there is so everybody there is already criminals or murderers, or robbers, basically people that society won't miss if something does go bad. But she tries to fight at every point, but things do tend to go bad. And she has no control over it. Um, uh, when it comes to the storyline itself, I introduced another original character, a little filly named Cutie Lock. Uh, she's basically just this chipper little spirit, and she came to Queen Hime after a long bit of tailing, and, uh, she basically, she's just there to help her out as much as possible, and in certain ways also save her. Uh, 
Uh, what specifically would you like now? Okay, well, you already kind of, you kind of explained about how she came to be. What was your inspira- I mean, what was your main inspiration for your pony? The main inspiration? Um, basically, I wanted to make a pony who was... I wanted to make her everything that the show itself was trying to portray. You know, a good friend, someone calm, loyal, and be all, all around. But also someone who was really hindered by something that they would have to fight against, you know, overcome. A certain story of uh, building up and overcoming people. And uh, I love samurais, so that's where that came to be. And not to mention, mine was Gonzo's, uh, pink, um, his own grimdark videos that did inspire me to start a Tumblr in the first place. And which one would that be? Oh, just couple of them, really. The Pink Mina was the first one I came across, and then there was Little Miss Rarity, and then there was um, Ipsy Witch, and Night Flower, you know, Crapplejack, and uh, you know, Paranoid Twilight, just the grand portion of them. Mm -hmm. I, loved, I, I love the dubs. I used to listen to them a lot while I was grinding in Final Fantasy games. <sighs> Another person influenced by yours truly. I feel weird now. Well, you should be proud. I know I am. I'm just saying that if weird manages to overall. <laughs> <laughs> it's I feel more weird than proud. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be a little awkward myself too if I inspired people. It's not addiction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I would have had the right influence instead of the wrong influence, you perverted mean spirit. What? What the else do you expect? Well, a little um, more gentlemanly on my part. What? Mm-hmm. You, you, hey, you as far as so many other people, you might as well get fun at poked at every now and then. Oh, wait a minute, you get poked at all the time, I'm sorry. No, <sighs> the only thing is, I'm kind of surprised, you should be glad that he didn't mention one of them. You know who that one is? Princess, Princess Molestia. Oh, good lord. That's another one. <laughs> oh, yeah, he just forgot about it, huh? I'm sorry. I can't remember oh. them all offhand. Oh, well. There were good dubs, great art. There were good dubs that I did with the best of my abilities, done with great art by some talented people that I just decided to bring along to YouTube because I, I just like to do comic dubs and try to be a better voice actor. Well, in a way, you also brought a lot more players to the table. Yeah. The fact of the matter was, I didn't know Tumblr even existed before your show. I, I, I just I just encountered it, and um, I uh, tinkered around with it, and figured out what the hell's going on, and uh, bada-bing, bada-boom. Yay. <laughs> you did a great help. You should be proud. Uh, yes, thanks. <laughs> and now... Um, Let's get through to some of the simpler questions since that took a while. Um, all right, let's get through some of the brony stuff since okay. it's simple enough for me to do, and to, that's the best that I can remember. Um, okay, what will be your? F uh, ugh, sorry. Let's go to this, something as simple as your favorite pony. Oh. I do have to admit, uh, uh, Applejack has a certain place in my heart. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, Applejack. She just, she seems to be just, you know, the mother figure of the whole thing. She's got <laughs> her own little, you know, quirks and own little, you know, country things that make me giggle every once in a while. Yeah, the little southern hospitality kind of deal. Yeah. Or, or they call it country, uh, uh, good old fancy country wisdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, um, that, that, that can only come with a bottle of a whiskey bottle. <laughs> oh. uh, well, in her case, it would be the bottom of an apple cider barrel. Uh, indeed, there's been plenty of, you know, spin-offs. Um, curiosity. How did you get into My Little Pony before you... <laughs> oh... Yeah. How uh, did you get... What made you watch... Became a My Little Pony fan? Oh, it's the same generic story. Just 
saw all these memes popping up all over the internet, and it started to make me curious. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it's, like it's, it's like a disease. Once it gets into you, it's like it doesn't leave. Yeah. Um. Because you got it. Yes, you got it. <laughs> It was just, it was an answer, though. The moment I saw that first episode, so well done, and then, and then it's, it's a cliffhanger right off the bat. I was just like, oh, okay, I'm <laughs> watching this for the rest uh, of the Um, well then, your favorite episode, then. Oh, my favorite episode. That's a bit of a toughie. Okay, uh, then. You know, in the end, I'd have to definitely say the Grand Galloping Gala. That or the Winter Wrap-Up. Winter Wrap-Up, Winter Wrap-Up. Yeah, that's two of my favorite songs. Oh. As well as just... I see. There it is. Okay, those are good episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Have, have you been drawing before you ended up encountering yours truly or ponies in general? I think the question he's really asking is what, I mean, what started you drawing in the first place? Um, well, it's just really something I've always done in my spare time. I've always been an artist and it just never well, really did anything that it. How old were you when you first started drawing? Four, after watching James and the Giant Peach. <laughs> oh my god! I I I I think I was in my teens when I saw that movie. Oh my I, god! I, 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 I'm elementary school. I th I'm oh my god! I'm old. <laughs> I was in elementary school, and people keep referring me to that for a while. You know what? I absolutely love that movie. There's no dog in it. <laughs> I'm such an old person. I anyway, hope the newspaper boy bring me some good news. There's just that scene with the crayons in the little box that he kept hidden, and that's where I started. And it's just a delightful little pastime ever since it was. <sighs> there we go, sorry. Then again, Marvel helped out. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. And then anime brought on. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Mm. Ah. Let's see. Oop. Itch, itch, itch. Ow! Mm. It's too hard. You okay over there? <laughs> Gonzo itched a little too hard. I, th I think I think he I think he punctured something. No, I didn't puncture anything. More like I had to twist so I can free myself of the itchy. I should have took a bath. Take a shower every day to keep the disease away. Yeah, uh, sure. At least you're not. At least you're taking uh, more, uh, more, you know, more of a bath than the people did during the Middle Ages. They only took a bath at least about once a year. Oh, good one. That's right. Well, that that you know, that in Christmas. <laughs> Wonderful. Scrub, yeah. scrub here, scrub up there, the very old land of Oz. Mm. Excuse me. But anyways, getting back to the subject at hand, yeah. we're good. We're okay. We know about your pony. We know what got you inspired to do that. But was ponies was ponies like your first major artwork you did, or was it something else before this? Um. Well, actually, yes, it was. I mean, beforehand, I was just doing little sketches in a book, or you know, just things here and there. Something I me and my friends for the most part. But this is the first thing I actually did that I, you know was. You know, had involved other people I didn't really know. So would that be like more like tunes, furries, uh, anime, or you know, what was it? A little bit of furries, a little bit of anime. I, I am a furry, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> anime is wonderful, a wonderful thing. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, just as long as you don't travel into the dark side of it. Oh, there's all Gonzo, you speak like that. You have you, you had experience in it. Hello, <laughs> my, fir my first manga book I've ever my, one of my first manga books that one of the first manga books I ever read was Helsing. Oh, I, I love Helsing. 
one of, one of the beginning anime titles that I was watching was Higurashi no Nako Koro Ni. Ah, man, wonderful. Yes, yes. Uh, but I own an NSFW blog, too, so... Yes, uh, we mentioned <laughs> about it. Let's fill the Queen of Hime, so... That is correct. Hey, Gonzo, you want to do a small favor? We have reached our capacity for the time being. You may want to open up your stream and kind of, like, open your doors to the, to, to more people, because we have reached over 50. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, Go ahead. Do not disturb, so I don't hear everybody. And, um... Anyways, I'll be posting my live stream up so that way. Um... Yeah, post it on uh, Tumblr and uh, if you need to. Yeah, give me a minute. But anyways, getting back to the subject at hand, while you're doing that, I'll uh, ask a few questions. Um, which which one is your favorite? You said that Applejack is your favorite pony. And that's correct. Okay. Um, let's see. Least favorite. Least favorite. Um. Honestly, I have to say Rarity. Really? Of uh, uh, all the ponies, Rarity is your least. Why is that? She honestly just comes across as a prissy, really high and mighty kind of person. Not exactly my favorite kind of person. I see. And you know how it is, us nerds getting bugged the whole life by that kind of girl. I don't know. Because <laughs> this is whiny. Yes. <laughs> Oh god. Oh, hold on. I need to since we're over to capacity, let me get that bloody thing up. Where is that dumbler? Oh fuck Facebook. Nope. Oh. That's why right. Facebook exists. What the Oh, and uh Huh? Um, just to confirm, yes, I pushed the date back to midnight tomorrow night. Midnight tomorrow night, not tonight. Tonight. Not tonight. There, reblog. And uh, if you got friends that are going on, pass it on the word to the other room. Word to your yes. mother. And also a word to whoever you want also want to pass the word. Actually, yeah. uh, if you actually Gonzo, you you already reblogged me already. But if you want to reblog me, uh, reblog me again, or at least edit it yours to actually add your other website. Say other room is here. That'd be another way of doing it. But that's besides the point. Um, getting back to the subject at hand again. Getting distracted. Move along. Move along. Okay. Um, you're okay. You were going. We we're talking about rarities. It's like that's 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 stuck up. Uh, you know what? But that's your um, opinion. <laughs> um, okay. If you had had uh, one night with one of the ponies, one night, just do whatever you want with. Who would it be, and why? Um. Oh, that's actually a. It's, it's this is actually, this gets this gets into the deep part of bro, of bronies into their subconscious mind. Okay. Uh, does it have to be canon characters or original characters as well? Uh, both. Make it interesting. Um. In all honesty, I'd have to say. Uh, Hmm. Uh, I honestly can't make up my mind. There's a grand portion of them, and they're all really great. You gotta choose one. Uh, I don't know. I think I, I think I'd pick Lyra, because she's honestly very pretty. Okay, and why? She's just because she's just pretty? She's pretty, she's, you know... Honest, I... I I just fall for that color scheme. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. It's, it's very vibrant. You just find her attractive, that's all. Ye yes, attraction. We'll just leave it at that. Yes. Uh, Don't make fun of me. We're not making fun of you, man. This is awesome. Wow. 
And so far, we're actually in half an hour into the sh actually 40 minutes, almost about just about 40 minutes into the show. Um, you know what? Here, let's say, how about we get some questions? Anybody wants to ask this particular artist a question? Uh, go ahead, shoot it in the stream, or you could basically, um, you know, you could throw you could basically throw your Skype name on there. We'll add you to call you and ask them personally. So. Um, I see. Okay, let me just... No, not you. I don't know the fan, the people who are watching the stream right now. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll have to apologize. I'm not the most, uh, technologically in that. That's okay. Neither are we. Ah, Melmare Derpy has a question. What inspired you in uh, to draw in general? To draw in general? Um... Honestly, I've always just taken great pleasure in drawing anyway. It's a great time, you know, great time passer as well as just something that I can put my heart into. Hmm. But usually for most artists, they get inspired, they find inspiration, they have to draw it, they have to put it down. Uh, yeah. I actually do have a third blog where I just throw random crap I do up there. You know about that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but you do... But also, there's a lot of another question. Then. Um, since we know you do both, safe work and not safe work, which one do you prefer most to do? Oh, in all honesty, I definitely have to do the not safe for work. But it, it's, any particular reason? <laughs> it's not oh. just because that is bad. It's also because it's... What I do, I do for free. And... Because I really just like, you know, the input. I like friends coming to me with their requests, you know, giving me an, a task at hand and do it for them. And I'm really happy afterwards. And it makes me really happy myself. Now to a little more deeper personal question. Do you clump to your work? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's leaving the the gun, though, man. He's dying. Oh, my God. Did you just have to do that? You're it's asking okay. an artist if he it's clops okay. to his own stuff? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just, it's okay. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I have once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My God. I'm Gonzo, Gonzo. I th artistic. I, Gonzo, I think you found yourself a new buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can, you know. You know that I can say you found a new client. <laughs> Poor Gonzo. <laughs> it's not addiction! Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I'm so tempted to just ask him to draw me my pony sauna. <laughs> he might take he might he might take you up on that. I would. <gasps> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There are two versions of me. Which one do you prefer? Oh, I'd probably have to say the female. Okay. <laughs> it's adorable. It's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the little gonzo so adorable. <laughs> it's not a dancing, is it? Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am so going to hell. You're already in hell, and you dragged me with you. <laughs> Look at the real world, bitch! Ha! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, Lord. Oh. Get, get yourself together, man. I am. You're the one stuck with. You're the one stuck with me. <laughs> and I have it. I will admit, though, after. Constantly drawing all the time. Lately, it's been wearing down on me a little bit. Really? Um, how how long do you draw anyway? What? Um. Oh. Well, I honestly draw almost every single day, and most pictures will take me at least uh, hour and a half to three hours, depending on how you know intricate the drawing is. Sorry. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Wow. <laughs> Wow! Talk about all the, about all the, the special details and everything, and 
Um, well, the first thing you do is basic outline. Second thing is coloring in. Most of that's that, that's the most complex part, really, just making it look just a shape. Then after that is shading, and after that's background. <laughs> And, uh, I have fun with that. That's a, honestly shady is my favorite thing to do. Thanks to Photoshop. Yes, the studio thing. But That's yeah, cool. it's uh, just playing around with the different tools, like the airbrush tool, making all the shading just the way I want it perfectly. Although I will admit, it's not a masterpiece. Usually, I'll throw away one or two pre-sketches before I actually, you know, pick one that I like, because uh, I'm obviously not the best. No, you're actually considered to be the best if you're not, if, if, if you're, you're considering yourself the best if you're still not happy with your own work. And, it's when you start being happy about your work is when you start getting yourself in trouble, because that'll be as far as you want to go. All great artists always has, you know, has a like, you know, I could have done that one a little bit better. Yeah, it looks nice, but it could have been done better. It's when they start saying, I'm satisfied with that work. That's when that's that's basically the max capacity right there. Indeed, until you can make a piece of artwork that you cannot tell the difference between it and real life, I you're always going to have somewhere to improve. Yes, of course. So and, I don't and, mind and the thing is, you have a long ways to go, and by the way you look, your work keeps on getting better and better and better. Indeed. I mean, a great, great example was Nightflower. I remember when I first I heard about Nightflower. Uh, his work was very simple. Then I grew even more, and grew even more, and grew to where it is now. And I have to say, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, a lot of practice, some practice with some tools, better art programs, a tablet, which, um, by the way, we'll talk about that later. No, actually, let's bring that up. Let's bring that up all, you know, all of a sudden. Oh, uh, yes, right, yes. Now, right now, I, I understand that this is maybe off the subject of, your, of you, uh, but uh, Night Flowers right now has a little bit of a trouble. Uh, his tablet actually just died, and uh, he needs some money to actually to raise to actually to do to actually continue drawing more. So, folks, if you know Night Flower or at least have an idea who Night Flower is, you can go, go to my Tumblr. You can find out who Night Flower is. He needs some donation of money, or if you have a tablet, you may want to ship to him. Send him a letter saying, "Hey, I have a free tablet. I don't use it anymore. You can have mine." He just need a new tablet. His tablet finally like tiny, it's like a crap. So either donate to his deal. He actually has a PayPal, and uh, or uh, purchase uh, a two-dollar, you know, a piece of sketch that he is th tossing out there too. They will be hand-drawn in pencil. Yeah, he's been drawing. He's been drawing stuff by hand now these days. But he really needs a tablet to continue on with his work. <laughs> either help him out or no pony butts. The plot stream will die. So please. Resur resurrect it. Resurrect it! In all honesty, it just kills me when artists can't. There you go. Nightflower has just posted onto the, onto the live stream on the uh, chat room his uh, his Tumblr. So please go to that and check it out. So I highly suggest it. I, I will say Nightflower was one of the first ones I actually really followed and one I really got in contact with and how I originally got started with you, all of you guys, uh, about live streams. So, anyways. So. Pay him a little bit. Tri pay him tribute any way you can. It doesn't have to be anything big. We're just asking for any, for just anything little or anything like that. So just remember, any little thing helps. Mm -hmm. So. Um. So, anyways, let's uh, move on to our next deal. Um, getting back to you. Last but not least, do you have any suggestions for the all these upcoming artists? Um, really, just just have fun with whatever you do, because in the end, that's really the whole point of this. Some people they look to it for a you know monetary income. Some people they look to it for social interaction. But when it comes to art, that's an expression of yourself. And if you're not having fun with what you're doing, then it's not necessarily right. So just have fun, you know, adventure. Be excited. Adventure. Excellent. Well, Daniel, I want to thank you for coming on to the show. It was my pleasure. And uh, hopefully, see some more more of your work. Um, we'll be 
We'll be we'll be probably uh, later on after the show. We'll probably be posting up some stuff, you know, about who was on the show. You can follow you know follow their links. Uh, so so folks, you know, uh, like I said, anything is possible when you put when you put your mind to it. You basically find your inspiration, whatever it is. It could be ponies. It could be just furries. It could be whatever. But this is what this is what it really needs. You know, this is what it shows that like even him, he can he can he can do it. He can pretty much do it. So Daniel, think again. And we're going to move on to the next deal right now. So, thanks for stopping by, Daniel. No problem. Have a nice day. You too. Yeah, that's really inspiring. I mean, uh, he's always has done all these. So, yeah, that's pretty much it's an interesting deal about him. What do you think, Gonzo? Uh, what now? Sorry. What do you think about the uh, about about uh, lust here? Uh, I say he's got a bright future on his shoulders. I definitely agree. Mm hmm. So, well, I'll just to let you folks know our next guest uh, is, has worked with the good, with the good doctor, Doctor Discord and Who's, Time Master and whatnot, and uh, and she. Uh, I think she lives across across the state, you know, across the United States from me. So, uh, you know, you know her, you love her, Miss Twilight Sparkle. Um, so, but the thing is, uh, I think it'd be a good time right now to probably bring her in. So let me treat about getting a hold of her. Yeah. Um... Let's see if she answers the phone. Ring, 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 ring. Pick up, please. Banana phone. Do, 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 do. Oh, Twilight. Hello, Twilight. Not ringing. Not ringing. What do you mean it's not ringing? Oh. Hold on, I have an idea. Uh -huh. Wait, I think you might have got the wrong one. I don't know. Ooh, right. I got the wrong one. Derp. Yeah. Wrong person. Derp. Don't worry. I it's derped. okay. I derped. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, Lady Derpy. Let's see. She answers. Hello, Miss Twilight Sparkle. Oh, my gosh. Now I get to say stuff. Ah! Eek. So, any special letters from Princess Molestia? Um, the princess doesn't send me very many letters these days. I think she's too busy uh, trying to deal with that massive flank of hers. And what a massive flank it is. Anyway. More to love, supposedly. <laughs> More cushion for the pushing, I suppose. One would say that. Poor Auntie I Celeste. I am so bad. I need to stop being bad. She needs to stop hanging around with the Time Master. Never say that. Oh, wait. Master? Yeah, I can. Uh, is that, I like, can do it without the Master. Doctor, but... Doctor's one thing, but Master is another. Do doctor, yeah, I mean... doctor is my, is my lovey dovey. I see, we've seen. <laughs> but, yeah, but the real question is so... why? Why would you cut yourself? I got sad. Don't Why you, did you let the like, time master like, get to you? Yeah, really. It, it's not that I let the time master get to me. It's that 
the Time Master has this ability to get he he's capable of getting to you no matter how hard no matter how high your willpower is he just he knows exactly what to say to get inside your mind you know they, they call that manipulation and it's it's, it's easily solved with earplugs <laughs> 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 or an industrial set um, earmuffs or whatever. Um, anyways, uh, either that or you always cast uh, silent onto him. You have magic after all. I do have magic, but my magic can only do so much. Come on, right. come on, egghead. Hey, <laughs> no, you're no making fun of me. Oh, I'm making fun of you. We're laughing with you, not at you. All right. <sighs> but all, all right. but all in seriousness, um, let's get actually to the show because we're now we're kind of like having our little private time. But the thing is, let's get to the real deal. Um, yes, sir. So, tell tell us a little about yourself. I mean, what uh, where are you from? I mean, where are you from? I mean, I mean, unless you want to give that stuff, stuff information out. Well, I'm I'm from the upstate New York area. I say that because if I just say New York, people are just going to be like, "Oh my gosh, have you been to the uh, have you been to the Statue of Liberty yet. I'm like, why? I don't live there. Oh, so you live in you the more to, spacious. When you live in New York, you have to specify that you don't live in the city. Ah, what's it? What's it like in where you you know live? Is it? Um, um, it's mostly boring, which is why I've turned to the internet for social interaction. Because the <laughs> internet is really, really great. For social porn. <laughs> oh. I, I was about to say socializing. You were the porn. What the hell's wrong with you, Gonzo? I'm turning back against you. <laughs> I think I, I think I think I finally got to him. Yes, after all the, after all these months of of programming, he's finally ready. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm going to call Molestia because I'm going to tell her that I think you're ready now. Anyways, um... Hello? Molestia? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's your nephew, Mean Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I think he's ready now. Uh, anyways, yeah, yeah, tomorrow Mr. night. Sparkle, yeah. While he's yeah. MIA. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's ready for it. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, I, I don't think he's... I don't, I, don't, I don't think he expects anything. Yeah, okay. Okay, behind the shed like usual? Okay. Okay, hey. bye. Oh, hey, I am back. phone with the princess... I'm supposed to be being interviewed. Yep. <laughs> Would you pay attention to us? Worry about me later. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't, I don't need to worry about you. I just need you need you need to be worried about molestia. But anyways, yeah, getting back to what we're doing. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if uh, your um, you know your tr your attempts to uh, socialize with everybody uh, did end up eventually leading you into ponies. Actually, that's not what led me into ponies. My my introduction to the realm of the pony is different. From, I have to say it's very different from everyone else's, except for Dark Haveness, because she's my twin. She kind of does everything I do. Uh, uh, let me, um, uh, I bet there's. I bet it's probably one way I know. Um, would you care to explain how you got into ponies? Well. I have an older sister who is a graphic arts major. She, somehow by magic, she she winds up having a job that's, that like goes into something I'm either interested in at the time or will eventually become interested in. She worked for Tokyo Pop while I was a weeaboo. And then she got a job at Hasbro as one of the art people. She actually is the one who designed the packaging and the the current logo and the Gen 3.5 logo for My Little Pony. Mm -hmm. And, like, every Christmas she would bring us, like, the latest pony that came out. My my first, my cherry-popping pony was a, a Gen 3.5 Rainbow Dash. Hmm. And... So I decided to, like, I saw, I started seeing 
the G4 ponies that she would bring us, um, I would get usually Rainbow Dash and my twin sister would get Rarity. And I was like, these things are actually kind of cute. I should see if there's anything else about them. And so I started hopping all over Google and YouTube and blah de blah And it's like, dude, these things are so kawaii day today. I need to become a fangirl. <laughs> Just like us guys are fanboys. You boys We're fangirl up. and you know it. Yeah! You squeeze, well, you squeeze and you wrong. wave your hands and you go like, oh my god, oh my god. Well, I try to, I try to contain it. <laughs> and uh, I try to do something else too. Um, like, uh, oh, I don't know. My god, these are so awesome! <laughs> so awesome! So the only reason, why, the main reason why I'm a brony is because of the woman who is the shining armor to my twilight. Who would that be? My big sister who works at Hasbro. Okay. Hey. Well, uh, <laughs> she's calling you. Now. Excuse me while my Asperger's go random. <laughs> no, I don't think your Asperger's going still. I think you just got lost in her voice. I, th I think that's what the problem is. You keep on getting lose. You, I guess, you seem to st stutter when you. She did a little high-pitched voice. The chat does seem to be going gaga over my occasional high-pitched kawaii. <laughs> yeah, your little, weep, your little weeble of voices somehow getting them a yeah, little, yeah. Uh, all warm and fuzzy, too. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, 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 no. Anyways. <laughs> um... <laughs> he, he, uh, <laughs> I heard it in his voice. I was trying to. I was trying to make sure she's all comfortable. I, all right. I think I um, just made Discord hooves come to closest jizzing as he's ever gonna get. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> wait, wait. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> do it again. All right. Come on. Um, you you want to do it? You want to do it again? What the the Fluttershy thing I just did? Yes. Make 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 the doctor jizz. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I I didn't mean to. That was just flutter guys, I guarantee you. <sighs> um hold on. Also hold on. my boyfriend is in the chat right now. Hello Tarukai. I Dabu, you are my honey bunny. That's cool. So so okay, so <laughs> I would love I would love to ask him this one question. Uh what what is it like to have your girlfriend actually be an artist? And also be a voice actress, I guess, in a certain, to a certain point at this matter. Well, I mean, I, I haven't gotten any, I haven't really gotten any work as a voice actor yet. I mean, I've gotten some people asking me, hey, can you do this? And I'm like, yes, yeah, sure, I will totally do it. I just haven't done any of the actual recording yet. I have been hired, but I have not done the work yet. I'm lazy. <laughs> um... All right, let's toss a few of the you know typical brony stuff. Okay, well, how about how about we how about we talk, talk, go to the top part? What inspired you to draw in the first place? Yeah, the fact that a pencil is able to go onto a piece of paper and make something that does that looks cool. That that's what inspired me. The the ah. fact that a pen and a paper can create that magic. Ah. When did you begin to start drawing anyway? Was it before or after your pony experience began? It was far before my pony experience. I was in second grade and I drew a picture of myself. Like the class was told to draw pictures of ourselves on our first day of school. So I drew a picture of myself standing at the bus stop and I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go to school. And the teacher noticed that I didn't draw a background. So she was like, you have to put a background in there. You can't just have it look like you're floating in space. So I added a space helmet, drew some stars in there, and I was floating in space. <laughs> oh, space. that's a counter troll if I ever heard it. <laughs> I have space. been a troll since elementary school. She was trolling when she was in elementary, man. 
Cause wait, wait, cause she's the T to the W I. Come on. I G H T, and ain't no other pony bring it down like me. I'm Twilight Licious. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, is Twilight your favorite pony, or do you got some other pony that your heart is set to? She wasn't my favorite when I started the blog, but she has since evolved into my favorite. Who who was your original favorite? It was a three-way tie. I think it was a three-way tie between Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie. Fluttershy may have edged them out just the teensiest, tiniest bit because I just wanted to hug her and tell her that it would all be okay and she doesn't have to be so scared. Ah, uh, just so adorable. <laughs> no, Fluttershy uh, is. Hush. I, I was talking about Fluttershy. Mm-hmm. Trust me, he right. really... Unlike the Fluttershy underpants. Do not bring her into this. <laughs> ah. Anyways. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I'm having my fun now again. Uh, I'm still going to hell. Uh-oh. You got in trouble again. You did not me. <laughs> I am so going to hell. Ugh. Shit. She's gonna rip me up. Yeah, I better continue. <laughs> recover from our mistake. Uh. Anyways, um. Okay, your favorite episode. What would be your favorite episode of this ger current generation? Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Fav what favorite uh, the, there's a favorite episode? Do you have one? At this point, I would have to say either the either the Royal Canterlot wedding or anything to do with the Discord because oh my god, if I were a dude, I would go gay for John Delancey. Look at the voice for Discord. Why don't you just Why don't you just stay a girl and just fall in love with? Wait, him? wait, hold on. I have a better one. Because you know, no, I know. I already know exactly what he's talking about. I know what he's talking I'm a, about. I'm a Yaoi fan girl, so I'm. I, I I'd prefer to be a guy and go gay for him. Yeah, but the thing uh... is, if, if you're if you really want to see more of him, go into Star Trek because he plays he plays a similar character to Discord. Uh don't worry, I am fully aware of that. Um, when Discord teleports away, that white flash that appears yeah, is exactly, exactly like, like Star Trek. <laughs> I was like, my first heard, I'm like, oh god damn, they got Q. Fuck! I, I, can't, I can't even wait. To, see, my dad doesn't, doesn't know I actually watched I this stuff. I my lucky stars. Face? <laughs> um. What made you decide to draw your own Twilight Sparkle blog? Thank you, Gonzo. I lost track. Well, I, I saw so many people were doing these pony blogs. My, my sister was it, it was like the Homestuck fangirl, and she was checking out all the Homestuck blogs, and I started noticing all these pony blogs, and I'm like, all right, you, you stick with the trolls and the the that stuff. I will check out these pony blogs. And I kept seeing all these great ones, and I'm like... I could probably do something like this, but I had no idea what to do. I was initially going to do Fluttershy being bombarded with all of the Rule 34 the internet had to offer. But then I, like, from Which what probably I basically see, Gonzo's dream. From what I could see, there, from what I saw at the time, there was not a lot of Twilight blogs. Like, I didn't see any when I was initially looking into what blogs to do. So that's why I started with Twilight. It wasn't until after I started Twilight that I noticed that there are about 20,000. Yeah, and I remember covering a few. In what? Yeah. Paranoid Twilight being one of them. Yeah, Paranoid Twilight, um, Friendly Twilight. Um, I'm also 
I also know of a Philly Twilight, uh, one where uh, Twilight is uh, inhibited with the powers of a Wendigo, as uh, referring to uh, Art's warming Eve. Um, and I believe she was involved in uh, a co-op blog with a Fluttershy. Um, and I also know of the sketchy Twilight that I did a dubbing of. That's as far as I remember. Yeah. Well, some people are just tossing out some of the uh, others, too. Uh, one of them did say about human Twilight. And where Twilight? There yeah, that's so one I mentioned. There are more Twilight blogs than I initially realized. Yours does have a cute. <laughs> Very unique it's to like, its own. I, I didn't... Part of me didn't... I didn't want to start an OC blog because I felt like starting a blog with an original character wouldn't get... Uh, wouldn't be as recognized because people don't know this character. It's like... Who the heck is December Crystal? What? Who is this bimbo? But if they see Twilight Sparkle, it's like, oh, I know her. Let's see what kind of antics this artist is bringing to the table. It's usually, it's usually a great marketing strategy. You take some yeah, that you take you take you take something that everyone knows, and then you take it, you tear it down, take it by a dozen eggs and a bowl, mix the fuck out of it, and then you get what you get. Miss Twilight Sparkle. Mm -hmm. In your own persona. Although in my case, instead of adding 12 eggs, you add 12 razor blades. Cause she li oh, she, yes. She lives within a universe where every, like, her entire world around her is collapsing in darkness and evil and insanity. And she is like the one sparkle of light that still exists within it. She's the last bit of sanity that exists. The last so hope, huh? Sometimes that just gets to be too much. It just, the burden of being so alone in a world where nobody cares about you and where nobody cares about anything except uh, being crazy or... It's like, it's like if, if like, Discord... Calls or... It's like if Discord actually won one. How Twilight was in that one episode. She was completely depressed that basically everything that she knew was turned upside down, and well, she it, and she and she had no more hope. It's not just if Discord won, because remember this is a kids show. If Discord won in the show, we we would have chocolate rain for all of eternity, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. This is yeah, if but... Discord won, and he was also in a show that was NC seventeen. Rated R. Uh... Yeah, just uh, dark and dark and full of blood and insanity and all that. And uh, Twilight seems to be the only one that's unaffected, and it's like she's well, it's the, the only, only kind of hope. Bell. I mean, there's still she still has Spike occasionally, but I, I kind of have him coming and going between Canterlot and uh, Ponyville. Like, I never show when he's showing up and when he's leaving. I just kind of imply that he doesn't, he's not staying there at the moment. Yeah. Like, I, I sent, I did send Spike back to Canterlot before Twilight's most recent attempt to dye her bed sheets blood red. Uh, I just didn't uh, show it just... because I'm too. I'm, I'm too lazy for story exposition. But Discord Hooves is trying to fix me of that. Uh, Disco's trying to make me a better storyteller, and I greatly appreciate that. That's always a good thing. It's always best to have good friends that are actually willing to help you out with any write, you know, with any writing, with any type of writing material. Like I've been helping out a few people myself, but the thing is that it's always great to have not more than one opinion thrown at at there to actually help you make it your own. I think that if it wasn't for Discord hooves, I wouldn't be like I don't think I I don't know if I'd still be doing the Twilight blog anymore because, um. Jitters has been just such a huge inspiration, and, uh, like, when, when my initial starting point was Little Miss Rarity, but she kind of has gotten to such a level of fucked up activity that I just couldn't connect myself with that anymore. But 
Then there was Discord Hooves, who decided to grab my marshmallow flank, and from there spawned the most beautiful friendship that I've ever found on the internet. Plus a suicide attempt that brings about all of the feels. All of the feels! <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Double getting into deep uh, details and story. Um... <sighs> Hold on. I, I think I just derped. Damn it. Where's, oh, where's my muffins? Um... Right. So let's let, let's get into uh, more into your whole entire um, drawing persona. Uh, when did you realize you were a brony? I think I realized I was a brony. Like I, I identify like I started calling myself a brony when I started buying the toys. <laughs> I realized that it wasn't just me calling myself a brony that I was through and through truly a brony. I realized that when I counted how many toys I have. Like, how many do you have? Right, this number does not include any of the ponies that I have either modded or plan on modding. This includes the blind bags, the pink Lestia, the Happy Meal toys, the brushables, and the one fashion style that I have. The number right now is one hundred toys. Nice, not bad. Oh. At least, at least, <laughs> at least it's not like that one college humor one that we saw. Yeah, the uh, the yeah. Uh, I, I also I also have the Twilight Sparkle plush that was purchased for me by my. Sweetie Weedy Schmoopy Doopy Pony Pie Taru Kai. That was adorable. And I, I, I think I think I think lost a few brain cells. But... People keep saying that my voice is so cute that cute that yeah, I'm giving them diabetes, but if if I'm giving you diabetes, I'm sorry. I'm in, I, I am injecting myself with penicillin. Oh, damn it! Why does it work? Oh wait, it's empty. Damn it! <laughs> Anyways, and suddenly there's a well, flood of people in the chat just going. <laughs> Boot dead. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, not only that, you were you were referring to <laughs> Arts and Hills Day. Anyways, even though it was cute and all. They were all sad that Flutter Mac never happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh. Um, Flutter Mac is one of the one of the few straight ships that I have. That and the uh, Disco Twy, or or as the fans have kind of termed it, buttery marshmallows. Buttery marshmallows. That's delicious. It's like I I'm big on the not so straight ones. Um, my number one ship in the show is uh, Rainbow Dash with Fluttershy, because I feel like Rainbow Dash would be all protective and be like, "You're like we've they've been friends, they've known each other since they were kids in Cloudsdale, and it just seems like Rainbow Dash would be like the tough, sexy dyke that would protect her little flower. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that does sound reasonable for a couple. Oh my god. Why I, I can't ship this? something on, I can't ship something unless I put a lot of thought into how it would work. Yeah, same here. The crack pairings of these are kind of offbeat. Like the ones that are talking about on my uh, on my live stream right now. Someone mentioned Disco Twy. And um, I just mentioned Disco Twy. But I'm in yeah. like the Discord hoops in Twilight because it, in the Tumblr verse that is canon. Well, yeah, and uh, some people might have interpreted it as Discorded. You know, just Discord in Twilight. But uh, 
I, I can see Anyways. why people ship Discord with Twilight. I just don't agree with it. Some people didn't. Some people thought of shipping Discord with Pinkie Pie. Well, yeah, she loved the chocolate rain. And she is freaking Guys, crazy. Eternal chaos comes with chocolate rain. And there's also that one point of the whole grim dark, you know, emotional, you know, Pinkie Pie that well ended up bobbing up in uh, a party of one, but that, that's in a whole other story, and that's from some comic that uh, it started me out as traumatic to see, but uh, I grew into it later on. But back away, beep, I totally beep, go crazy. Beep, beep. Back, back, back it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, everybody's suffering from diabetes, man. Call Liberty. Someone call <laughs> Liberty. Call Liberty Medical. They'll help you get I have diabetes di- medication. I have diabetes. Beetus, 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 yeah, beetus. Call, call Liberty. <laughs> I hit my wife, and then I realized my wife's been dead for five years. Who the hell did I hit? I hit. <laughs> God almighty. Eh. Boy, all the gods and not everything is unholy. Make me a sandwich. Havenus won't stop whining because she wants me to sing, but that's just because she's drunk. Again? <laughs> <laughs> she drunk? You, you don't even, girl, you don't even know her. Don't even, like, judge. <laughs> but you laughed. It means you you agreed on that. You're like, again, yeah, again. <laughs> well, I'm not saying shut up. I'm just saying that that you want. I'm just letting. I'm letting the boys know that you want me to sing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be have to wait for another time. But we're back to the interview. Being distracted by diabetes. My apologies. Yeah. Uh, and, um, um, pony um, ships. Hmm. So, what, can you give us any insight to Twy? Is she going to be alright? Is she going to survive from all this? Or is she going to go right back to where she was? Well, I, I will say that she is going to physically survive. I mean, she's I don't want to say that she's going to start getting more depressed because she ne- she honestly never stopped being depressed. I mean, throughout the blog, like you've seen her laugh and smile and giggle, but she's been putting on a brave face. She acts happy so that nobody will know how sad she really is. Yeah, it seems that even though you see a smile behind it, it's uh, broken heart, a broken heart and sadness. Yeah, it's it's really sad. Uh, I'm hoping that Twy will be able to make it better, or at least a little bit better. Well, I mean, she she's better than she she is a little bit better than she was before. Because when I first started the blog, when she was first, like, trolling around the internet, being all depressed and stuff, it was just her. She she just had herself, and she was just dwelling on these thoughts. She, she turned to the internet to get new friends, because she no longer had the level of friendship she had with the Elements of Harmony... She she's better than she was before because she, she has the doctor in her life now, and uh, as much as he may think that he has effed her over with a lemon smothered knife, it's like he's he's really the best thing that's happened to her in a long time. Now we kind of saw him actually becoming undiscorded. Any insight to that? I don't know how much I'm allowed to say on this. Oh, I'm just saying. Is, is, will, is this? I will say that Twilight in the past has been responsible for several. Um, I'm gonna say, undiscording. 
Like, when he came to... Okay, okay, stop right there. Uh, stop right there. Uh, that should be more than enough. I see I see what's going on. That's more than enough. And you're not going to say it, are you? No, I'm not going to let her say it, because you know why? This will ruin this will ruin the storyline of anything else. The same, the same. We're, I, I love her. I like to leave it as a cliffhanger, because I have a pretty good idea now. So... That's anything further than that might ruin the uh, special deal, and then I'll, you know, don't want her to get another one. But I want. I'm I'm not giving away anything from the current storyline. I'm I'm talking about things that have happened before. Exactly, but I like, think that might give enough too much of a clue. Well, the the first time that she, I'm just saying, the first time she ever slept with the doctor, which was the first time she slept with anybody, I started getting hitting getting hit with hate mail of OMFG she's a slut now you have turned you have ruined this character for me she is now a whore Be mm. all because I drew her insinuating that she had had a sexual interaction with someone one time and so Ooh. the doctor came to her defense and Talk, talking about coming to her defense was the first time that he undiscorded. So I, I think I think Twilight is a special pony, and not just because she's the element of magic. I think Cadence has infected her with the magic of love. <sighs> Excuse me. You're excused. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow, it's 8.25 right now, and let's see. It's 11.25. We're in the time zone that she and I are in. Yeah, I know. It's 11.25 over in other places, too. It's probably midnight somewhere else. Oh, wow. And we found this call for 30 minutes, and it's been doing really great. I'm actually... I I I I, I think I think we I thought we were doing this for about an hour already. I'm surprised. Um, um here's a question by Bad Wolf nine five one zero. Did the royal wedding actually happen in your particular reality? Basically, I consider everything that's hap that happens in the show. Ta it, everything that happens in the show takes place a while before anything that happened in the Twilight blog. So basically, if anybody asks me about something that happened in the show, I'm just like, why are you bringing that up now? It's been like five years. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this your storyline happens five years into My Little Pony. Well, I just um, I just threw out a random number. I'm not sure exactly how far in the future it takes place. Um, oh, okay. a, a time lord might have a better idea, but he's jumping all over the place, so maybe not. <laughs> I bet it, I bet it's hard to keep track of time with him around. <laughs> yeah. Well, but. Let's get right. back to... The Master says three years. Let's go with three years. It's as good a number as any. Three is usually an evil number. Three go, a, 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 is the loneliest number that you'll ever know. Face. <laughs> Why did everybody want to go with three, then 13, all these evil numbers? Yeah. Everyone's evil. Why do you think they consider roulette the devil's game? Because if you add all the numbers, you get 666. 666 six, six is not the number of the beast. The number of the... the Often in dreams, number numbers appear upside down and backwards. So 666 six, six becomes 999, nine, nine, as in 1999, the year of his return. Uh, We're already past 1999, so... Uh... <laughs> Poke that into your little hole. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It, I, I just quoted a bad uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Excuse me when I pull out the pipe. Anyways. Um, my, my, <sighs> my, uh, oh, sorry. Ooh. Somehow the, uh, 
midnight truffle I had earlier this afternoon is starting to get to me. I only finished like half of it. I should get to it back to it. I mean, it's really chocolatey. Um. Anyway. Anyway. I was about to make s- some stupid silly thing like uh, sixty six ain't the devil's number. It's five 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 blank 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 blank. <laughs> Damn it, why you gave us fake numbers in Hollywood movies? I want to call Indiana Jones. <laughs> Dude, Indiana Jones does not exist. Quit calling me. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get the uh, trying to get Han Solo, so I'm trying to get an international spaceship to like Alderaan, like in all the wrong places. Oh! Looking for our characters in all the wrong places. <laughs> By the way, why is Stark Haven too silly? Wait, what about (laughs) what about Haven? Stark Haven, he, um, why is he speaking with long dashes? I have no idea. She is speaking in long dashes because I'm guessing she's the one that got dropped on her on her head as a baby. Derp. Or, or maybe it was that flower she ate when she was, like, one year old. It poisoned her mind. It, that, that, was it blue? Or was it red? I think, I think it was purple. Purple nurple! It, yeah, it was probably purple because, um, I guess she was, like, quoting Fafari from Homestuck or something. I don't know. Hey, Venice is weird. It is. <sighs> uh. Anyways, um... Have you just run out of things to talk about? Yeah, I'm starting to. Okay, I have a, I have an idea. Um, folks, if you have a certain question that you may want uh want Miss Twilight Sparkle to answer, please write in the Skype uh, chat. Or unless or you, if unless, unless I know you, you and basically you're on my on my Skype list, I may even call you and actually have you be on on the show here with us. So. Ask me stuff. I like, an- I love answering questions. Like, anybody who follows my mod blog, they know that I do TMI Tuesday, like, every Tuesday. It's, like, the highlight of my week. Uh, let's see. Um, Taronis, who is best pony ever? Um... Oh, um, Haveness is standing next to me right now. She's whining because you guys called her a dude. Huh? I didn't even know. Sorry. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Terranus is asking who is best pony ever, in your opinion? Who is best pony ever? I have a bad feeling about this. (laughs) This is entrapment, and I don't feel safe with it. Um, Uh, then, uh... I'm going to say best... No, because Inky constantly tries to rape me. I don't appreciate that. I'm going to say Lauren Goodnight is best pony. And uh, um, Taronis is best person. Uh, Let's see. um, What else? Um, Oh, Discord wants to know if he can sleep on your butt. Like, like he needs to ask. But apparently he does. Uh, apparently, according to him, he's he's asking. So the time asker is asking w- w- about your opinion on him. About the time master or about time master's mod. Good question. How about both? What are we talking about? Ooh. Ooh. That should make it a little more interesting. Because if you mean Time Master the Pony, then he's a very, like, from my perspective, he's a very interesting, creative, wonderful character. From Twilight's perspective, he can go die in a fire and explode and become one with the depths of hell. Very dark, but very awesome. If we're talking about Time Master's mod, then... I'm fangirling over his immense storytelling problem or uh, talent. <laughs> his, 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 
calling problem. <laughs> oh my god. I, Followed uh, by, it's not an addiction. He's a very talented story writer, and he's a very... <laughs> He's just, he's just talented and wonderful, and he, if I were Siskel and Ebert, I would give him two thumbs up, and my two thumbs up would actually mean something. Ah, uh, uh, on my other live stream, uh, one person keeps asking if he, if, uh, it's Ask Dark Lightning Dash, can I hug Twy? Hmm, if you're going to BronyCog, of course you can get a hug. <laughs> hugging, uh, hu hugging is my absolute favorite thing to do. Uh, you're heading to this year, uh, BronyCon in New Jersey too, or uh, another BronyCon? I, I I am indeed heading to the new the summer New Jersey BronyCon. Oh, cool! I'll be heading there too, as you've already probably know. So, as I I'm going with a uh, jitterbug. Ah. Uh, um but yeah I can't promise any pictures but well it'll be it'll be more like private pictures <laughs> yeah uh um, we actually we we understand I'll probably be dragging my cameras along I've I managed to get a cord for my still camera and I've recently paid off my camcorder which means I'll take plenty of pictures and videos yeah, he's be, basically you'll be uh, basically representing us when you go down there. Yeah, I'll try my very best to uh, spread the word of the mini arcade show. Well, not just that. Also, <laughs> add, you know, just ask some of the actors and actresses. Just basically ask them a few questions. Mm. And you could tell Sorry, you could tell Princess Molestia, have my. Baby. No, 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 no. Um, one la how about we make this one last question before we go into the next guest? Someone yeah. pestering me over my Steam account because I think he's paying attention to the live stream as well. Um, do you like socks? Do I like socks? Um, from a human In perspective, they keep my feet clean and dry and comfortable but from a pony perspective I've, I've never drawn twilight with socks on i was thinking of it but then i'm like then i went into hipster mode and i'm like nah that's too mainstream you, uh, it would be nice and impressive to see you draw her at least but uh if you if if you don't want to uh, draw her and Sucks for any reason at all, then I nobody's gonna force you. Okay, you you do what you want to do. I, I may uh, eventually draw her in socks. I don't know. Oh, well, we'll let you we'll let you think things over, and well, probably that'll probably get you something. Um, she <clears throat> she she's got wrist bandages right now. Isn't that enough? Well, yeah, we'll we'll let her recover or. Spit it out. She she's not gonna fully recover. She she is gonna have some scarring. Yeah. I, I will I will let that little tidbit slide. Those could be just, very well hidden with socks. Sorry. <laughs> I know, he has a point there. The the reason why the one of the reasons from an artistic standpoint why I had her cut herself so much, like there's more slashes this time and it's on both wrists and they're bigger and deeper um from a storytelling standpoint it was because she was so much more distraught this time when she attempted it from an artistic standpoint i needed something to physically distinguish my twilight from the rest of the internet twilights makes sense ah yes i believe i've seen that similar similar cases as well um rarity Lamar, that's simple yes, enough. Yes, and uh, molest. Yes, uh, some of the rarity blots. Um, one has a uh, strange uh, something affecting her eye. Uh, sadistic rarity, which is which is who I'm talking about, really. Uh, her left, her right eye is um, a little messed up and bleed, and actually cries out blood. 
um, Little Miss Rarity, um, Scratches, Black Eye, and I believe Princess Molestia ended up changing her hair color to monotone. And uh, Tro- was it Trelestia, I believe? Yeah, pretty much pink instead of white. So yeah, I can see where I can see that'll probably be effective from an artistic standpoint for you to um, leave the scars on this particular Twilight. Yeah. Did I? For a moment there, I thought I lost you. <laughs> no, I was just looking at the rarity ponies that I modded to look like Little Miss Rarity. Ah. And last but not least, question is: If you have any suggestions to any of the artists out there, what would it be? If I had a suggestion for any of the artists out there, I would say: Don't I? I I, I don't know. I I think don't give up because you're always going to be improving. You're always going to be getting better and. Even if you only have, like, one or two fans, they, they will push you to be your very best. I mean, if you look at the beginning of my blog, like, the first uh, few posts, it's basically just a Twilight line art with her eyes very simply colored in. But as I started getting more and more inspired by my followers, I started doing more and more color, more and more shading more and more I, I started getting more detailed because these the these people were pushing me to be the best that I absolutely could. So just don't give up because you'll always have at least one person who doesn't want you to give up. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Well Ty we got we have to move on with the show, but it was excellent having you here. It was fun, but we have to It was on. excellent being here. Thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. I hope to see some more great work uh, from you. So thanks for stopping on by. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to move on to our very, uh, our next guest right now. So right now we are going to bring in. Uh, I was gonna clear the deal. Uh, I yeah. was trying to say, what will that be? <laughs> because so. I've I've got a. Hey, hey. hmm? I was trying to hear you, but unfortunately, I don't know. I didn't know that you hung up until all of a sudden my little indicator because I muted all my sounds. Yeah, of course. For, just warn me before you hang up. <laughs> trying to keep professional. <laughs> Anyways, what will be our next guest? That is Lady Derpy Photos. Interesting. So, this should be an interesting person to interview right here, but it should also at the same time be fun. So, let's go on ahead and let me try to get her introduction here. Wrong one. Wrong video. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Whoopsie. Here we go. Found it. Her introduction. Mm. Just bear with me, folks. I hope so. This is not working. Work. I want you to know that I'm happy for you. I wish nothing but the best for you both. I know the version of me, is she perverted like me? Would she go down on you in a theater? Now I will bring in. And here she is, Lady Ooh, Derpy. That was loud. What's up, Tumberbell? Whoa, <gasps> my Damn. ears! I think I just went deaf. Ow! What? I just scoop out the muffins. Ah, Derpy. 
please. Derpy, use your indoor voice. Indoor, please. I am indoors! Ah! My Not point. indoors enough! Gonzo, you're doing it too! Oh, it hurts. Ears. Discord, who's? Forget you! Derp. Oh. 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 Damn. Oh. 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 Okay, um... Yeah, you're right. You do You do sound like Vital Scratch. Ow. You must have been hanging out with her. Yeah. Okay, so we got the moderator for Lady Derby Photos, and from what I also understand, you're also the moderator behind... Uh, wait for it... Pink Amina Returns. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. The moderator that's picking up where Crooked Trees left off. Yep, I'm doing that one too. <sighs> mm. All right. Now let's get some of the questions out of the way. Well, we'll deal with the, the individual blogs later, but let's first talk about you. Okay. <laughs> what inspired you to be an artist? Um, mostly from, like, my brother, because he used to draw, like, he used to draw, like, he used to draw, like, kind of, like, art you would find on tattoos and stuff, and, and yeah, it's good, I basically got inspired from him, didn't turn out too well for him, now he's, uh, drunk, but oh well. So basically, you picked up you picked up where he left off. Yeah. Well, at least you got something out of it. That's always a good thing. So then, where was your starting point? Was it, it wasn't ponies to be your starting point? It was somewhere else, apparently. Um, what's the question? Okay, where was your where, where was your drawing starting point? What uh, was that? I mean, before ponies. Um, I started, like, actually trying to draw during middle school, where I used to draw, like, little funny comics from my friends, and they weren't really that good at all, but, but I still, I was trying, and from there I kept going on. Then, when I got into high school, I finally got my very first laptop. I still have it. It's not this one. And I started, like, messing around with paint, and I tried to draw with it, like, with a mouse, and uh, that did not, that, that did not go very well. Then I tried more digital media, and I kept working up from there, and I actually had, in a, I was in two different fandoms before My Little Pony, and now I'm here. That's cool. So, what was your, like, what started you out with My Little Pony? Like, was it your friends? Was it uh, just be randomly passed by? Was it Gonzo? Um, yeah. Gonzo was one of them. But yeah. after I got introduced to this, Gonzo, hold your, continue your orgasms, please. It wasn't an orgasm. It was sheer shock. Same thing. I think she got you that it's one. It's not bad shock. It's not that kind of shock. It's um, more like, oh my god, another person, a famous, a very good artist, just influenced by me. I'm like, why can't oh you, my why, god, why can't you want to tell? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hell, Gonzo. You just don't know it yet. Don't know it yet. Because he's already oh. there. Ah. <laughs> Living pony hell. Living pony hell. <laughs> And hence, on the seventh day, the sky rained with ponies. Pegasus added corns and earth ponies that talked a different color. And they called it such a crazy crap! Or they should call it <laughs> MLP. My Little Pony. Pum, pum, pum. And thus, the world was doomed. <laughs> no, it was really fucked. Yes. Oh yeah, back to the question at hand. Um, the very first thing I was introduced to 
to the show was through this this one image on DeviantArt where I saw it was a, a picture of Derpy and Lyra together. And then it was like back last year in the summer. Then, then another then I saw another pony in my my messages. I'm like, what's with all these ponies? What's with, why is everybody so into the ponies? Then I decided to look it up on YouTube. I watched a couple episodes and I was like Where the why why was it night what what I don't even I watched like yeah. ten episodes in one day. Like non stop and then I had to go to sleep. But like I still wanna watch ponies. Ponies on the brain. Ponies. Then uh, I didn't but what really brought me in to the whole show was the fandom itself. Like I saw all these art pieces from all these different people, all these different comics based on the show itself and I'm like, wow, these people are just having so much fun with it. I want to get in I want to have fun too. This looks like a really fun community to to be about. And then I saw Gonzo's video of ask Pikamina Dian Pie, and I'm more like bandwagon. Uh, I was the nail that. I was pretty much the last nail in the coffin, huh? Yeah, you were pretty much the last nail in the coffin. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Gonzo, you're 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 the devil, and you're creating your army, and you're dragging me along with you, you sick bastard. <laughs> Think that. Now I finally understand it now. We're not con being controlled by Tumblr. We're being controlled by you. This is all you're doing. You just made us, you just made us think that, that, you're, that you're sweet and innocent and all that. But you're really... You're corrupting everyone. You're killing us with your, with your dawdness. You're killing us with your pitched voice. Killing me yeah. softly with his song. Killing me softly Killing with his me. song. Living my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! Alright, um. <laughs> Alright, let's Okay, Brady, you're right. You're right, Brady. Um, so, um, so basically, we pretty much told you what got you into ponies. Um, have you have a favorite pony and a favorite episode of Friendship is Magic? My favorite pony is Derpy. Of course it's Derpy. She's, she probably would have been like my best friend in, in real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, then let's get into the pony questions, the real pony questions. We are, we're 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 about, we're about, we're pretty much know that you're a brony as it is. Yes. Then let's talk about your OC character. Let's get into the OC, the background, or kind of the uh, adaptation of a pony into an OC. What? What? Um. What's the story behind uh, the derp? Yeah. What's the story behind a lady derpy photos? Um. Well, I. I the the first moment I really wanted to make this blog was during um, the episode where Derpy actually had a voice in the show. It was in the last roundup, I think. Yeah, the yes. last roundup. And I'm all like, like this was like that. That was this was like the thing that made me realize, wow, this 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 is just the best. This this is just the best fandom to be a part of because they they've taken a pony that's was probably just an animation well, yeah, and yeah. give her a voice exactly. It's uh -huh. like they brought her to life even more. It's like Derpy's not owned by Hasbro; it's it's owned by the whole fandom itself. Okay. 
And that's why I was yeah. super duper pissed when they changed her voice and fixed her eyes. Well, they wanted to fix yeah. her eyes, but they never really fixed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry about the yawn. Ugh. Um, but I mean, they, 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 all, they, all I know is that they did. I know that they only changed the voice and they took out her name. Yeah. You know, Rainbow Dash said her name. They basically took away everything. They took what the Bronies fought for and yes. stood up for. And that was a big mistake. But, according to the Wiki, Wiki never changed it. They kept it the same. Yes. yes. Which is a good thing. Because, you know why? That's what the original was. Oh, she says it's a bad name to call her Derpy. It's all bad about this. Eh, you know what? Well, we're all human. Yeah. Derpy's pretty much as close to human as more than any other pony. She's I more mean, she's more human than hu humanly possible. Yes. But they just they just you know, but basically a bunch of people that want to complain, you know. And us 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 bronies don't have any complain about it at all. Just like, you know, they don't pay your bills. They no. they're they're costing you a lot more money by complaining. You know, then uh, you know, then us actually watch it. Now you're going to have complaints from both ends. You know, you, you know, and the thing is, I've learned in the long run, you can't let your personal interests get in the way of your work, because mm -hmm. because you want you lose money out of it. If you turn down every single job because due to every you know, some, something that basically didn't give you a good vibe to it, you lose money. I mean, I could go I could go into details of great examples, but we're not here for that right now. Um, what we're here to do is do an interview. So let's get back to the to the total tired, your derpy story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what pretty much gave, what pretty much came up with um, more like uh, I'm looking at your archive right now, uh, seeing that derpy is a model for the great photo finish. It's magic. Let's bring the magic. And yeah. LMR has a thing for photo finish. I know. I saw that. I made a post about that too, with this, with the photo finish doll of, on top of what supposedly his bed and a shadow lurking over it. <laughs> bum bum. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Magic's gonna happen right there. But the thing is, what's really funny about it is he doesn't sleep with his doll. That I'll vouch for that because uh, it's always either near to his computer or somewhere just sitting on his deal, never on his bed. The only time he's going to bed when he's basically petting in and has to do something real quick, has to toss her to the side. But he's really nice to that doll. I watch some of his streams about it. <laughs> I know, it's sad. Everybody, everybody, you know, but I guarantee you one thing if they ever made a uh, life size doll of her, you know, one of those, they call them real dolls, and uh, has all, yeah, he would basically go to town on that with no problem. Are those. Yes. Waifu pillows. No, no, these are different type of dolls than that. Uh, but let's not get into that. Moving along. Okay, tell us about. Okay, how? Okay, she was working for the. I know she was working for the mail for the mail carrier. Yeah, and, she was. Okay, what happened with that job? Um, Dinky, her daughter, basically, she got. She had. She wanted to go to a, a specific like a. It's like a private school for unicorns to learn more magic than than the average unicorn in a, Ponyville. An advanced school. Ponyville's cost and and private schools cost money. You know that they you they, that that's not cheap. So money makes the world go around. Yes. Yeah. Sadly, so she she took up a job with Photo Finish like right after her. Photo Finish's episode, Green is not your color. Mm hmm Yeah. So, go on. And, um... And, uh... What does Photo Finish see in this... E derpy? She sees beauty with within her character and her eyes. Oh... Now that ought to, sh that ought to like, 
That ought to say derpy aim. Uh, I, don't know, I don't even know what to she say. She feels pretty. Damn it. Also pretty. <laughs> Fat. No, 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 no. That's not it. That ought to pretty much put snail on the coffin. That of the little argument that Derpy is d- Derpy's not a good character. <laughs> if if what you say is true, then <laughs> by God, I hope that she will be popular among all the mayors and colts of Equestria. <laughs> she she kind of is. I just haven't showed it. That much yet, cause I'm lazy. Mhm. Ah. Uh. It's cute. I I I actually like it cause it's you know it's you know cause you know did I have to say did see the whole you know the whole entire caring process of you know for her mother and other people. It's really cute. It's really adorable. And I think that's what really sucked me in the most was that it wasn't Derby itself. It was just the whole entire Dizzy and her simple simple you know. Ideals was really cute, <laughs> but I mean, getting back to the back to the story. So she basically she works for Photos Finish just to make ends meet with money. Now, yeah. explain about the eye patch. The eye patch. Well, Photo Finish she didn't want it on her at first, but as everybody knows that that even in our own society that women's appearance is it's they take it into a lot of account like basically photo finish isn't like the top boss of the whole thing of the whole fashion company magazine I don't know what it is Mm -hmm. that's just somebody above her saying that this this I like this girl but it's just the eyes, man. It's either you put something over it or you just Photoshop it out and photo finish would rather just hide it than than just than just edit her. She wouldn't she'd rather just she hide ra- it over. Yeah, yeah. She, it'd rather be real life instead of, you know, mm-hmm. edited. Like, it, it makes sense. Like a lot of magazines yeah. of girls are photoshopped, if you if you didn't know this. I saw an article a few months before that that a lot of women are photoshopped there's like this one picture of this kind of kind of plump girl and they photoshopped her t- to make her look thin gave her like an orangey glow and i was like it's art just, it's yeah it's art and advertisement <laughs> well also art and advertisement yep and they do that you know even though they had a crooked nose they can photoshop it to make it look straight yeah. It's art. Like, you know, think of it of Owen Wilson and that freaking nose of his. Yeah. Taking that and, and basically just picture it with a straight nose. No one would ever expect it. No one will see it. It's like for the people who actually pay attention to it, like me. It's like taking every, per, per, uh, you know, imperfection and then photoshopping it. I mean, shoot, I've seen people actually taking... Uh, you know, some of the some of the people that's basically every average Joe, and then just turn them into from, uh, you know, it's from average Joe to supermodel, or Superman, or Superwoman, or whoever they are, or some sort of hunk that you'll probably find in either California or New Jersey, <laughs> or in a foreign country. Yeah. But we won't get into that. But anyways, yes. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me get back to something else that I I wanted to. I Shoot. wanted this answered. I'm looking through. I remember some of the recent um, derpy posts that mm-hmm. she was pretty much um, depressed, saddened, and just wrapping herself up in a blanket, crying. I noticed that she's was her eyes instead of being you know golden and everything, she also looked a little green. Yeah, uh, there's a there's a reason behind that. And it has to do with, with the royal wedding episode. Oh. Really? Oh. It has to do with that. Oh. Are we dealing with uh, Changeling? Yes, we're dealing with Changeling. No, she's not a Changeling. No, she's not. Stop, 
Stop sending me. Stop sending messages. Oh, I was just thinking. I was just thinking. <laughs> it's just a thought. We're we're not accusing you or anything. It's just a thought. There. Can you like explain it though, in detail? Um, I kind of, okay. I kind of plan to make like this one gigantic, fucking huge update that I'm that I'm currently working on, but it's just. not a clone it's it's basically gonna be like a it base it's a like a, i'm just gonna say just think of the musical number from from the episode oh would it be this day aria yes i love that song oh. i see yes you see anyways enough of, enough of that Let's I, move on. Uh, yes, uh, she'll she'll probably give out the full details when she ever gets to it. it yeah. this, this kind of art takes time, by the way. Be patient, people. I know. I do full color. Derp. Full render. Dim to the. I put effort into this. Oh yes, yes. I I, I can see in your art. <laughs> These are very well drawn photos. Yes. Taking with a nice camera. <laughs> From Fruit of Finish, the, va- the magics. <laughs> uh, what would be your tool of choice for all these drawings? How do you do these? I use Paint Tool Essay. I. Hmm. It's my. That's it's- it's- it's my favorite program now because it I can do, I can do my my artwork way more faster than when I did it with, with like the first old 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 posts. Ah, that seems to be a popular tool amongst uh, some of the good artists. Paint tool side. Yes. Um, you could search. Oh, someone is saying, can we download it? Is it free? You can search for it. Yeah, you uh, you'll probably be able one. to find it. Yeah, you can you can you can Google actual, it and find it. The actual thing costs money, and I I didn't pay yeah. for it. So shh. Yeah, I. <laughs> well. Shush, 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 shush. I, I I paid for mine. I paid for it. Quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I paid for my Vegas Pro Ten. <laughs> Some people can't afford the stuff that we, we need, and uh, sometimes we have to go the uh, other way, the free version. Yeah. The free do. way, yeah. Or you can get handouts. <laughs> I mean, I ended up getting my games that way. Gmod was a handout. Thank God. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of ideas. Wait, we didn't even get your favorite episode, did we? No, we have not. I was about to really get to that. I was letting you two have your little thing. So, what is your favorite episode? My favorite episode is The Royal Wedding. The two-part episode. Because that episode just really helped me out. Like, uh, I know a lot of people in the chat have been asking about, what happened to Butterscotch? What happened to him? But I don't know what happened to the creator of Butterscotch. I think it was because his the posts he was posting people it was not his artwork. Just so you know, he he's basically editing editing the pictures to make it look and so that it could work for his blog. So basically, he was basically cheating. Yes, he was basically cheating. Like that's why his style kept changing from from pony to human. Not a good thing. It's never a good thing to actually do something like that because that's considered to be dishonest, and you're basically claiming other people's artwork as your own, which is not really easy. I know. I was kind of. I was trying to figure it out at first. I'm like, oh, I'm like, this is one of Hello. The, this is not. This yeah, is Gonzo, you're still here. Yeah. Something's going on. 
I mean, yeah, it, it, you know, according to uh, the Bad Wolf, that is play, uh, plagiarism. I mean, if you get inspired to actually do a piece of art and you actually draw it out to similar to it, but not tracing over it, that's art right there. But when you actually are t when you actually literally taking uh, someone else's artwork and tracing over it and then color and then color color and call your own, that's not art. That's, I know. that's basically that's that's that's, that's, that's copying. That's copying. You might as well just copy and paste the other you know, their art onto yours. It's like, hey, this is mine. Why well, take the effort to trace it into it? I know. Well, that was messed up. Hang on. What's going on, Gonzo? Uh, some sort of disconnection, and the next thing you know, um, you guys are muted, and I can't hear it, and I wasn't able to hear you. I swear, there's something wrong with my connection. Mm. My connection is perfect because uh, I am perfect. I guess it's because of the multiple multiple things that's going on right now. I mean, I don't think Probably. I need to continue on with my live stream because we're down to 31 viewers now. Well, how many have you in your stream? Uh, 12. Keep it. Keep it on there. Because, you know, just keep it going. Fine by me. Well, it also gets you some uh, more screen time on yours to a certain point. Um, let's get back to what we're doing here. Because we do have one more guest after this, and this and that will be coming up here pretty quick. Um, so, anyways, getting back to the subject at hand. Yes, people, do not steal. That yeah. is the moral of of the lesson. Do not steal. Yeah. By taking, so, to, by taking someone else's... Especially not muffins. Do not steal muffins. They may be delicious, but don't steal them. You know, it's, 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 like, it's like trying to take someone else's uh, muffin recipe and call it your own. Which is not... Like my everything muffin. It's it's almost yes, because uh, I've encountered this problem time and time again. People, uh, I know someone who took someone's art, edit, try to over, try to paint over them with their own OC. It's that was that wasn't that that one own. video I saw. Yes, oh, yes, yeah. that was it. Yeah, not cool. Yeah, that, that's like that's like trying to say, hey, look at my look at my stuff. I, I'm great. I'm wonderful. I, I do all the great you're artwork. Not great. You're not great if you are like painting over someone's hard work. That's 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 fraud, and the fraud yeah. and fraud's against the law. It's my it's might as well try to say, you know, you trace over the Mona Lisa. Look, I created the Mona Lisa, and it's my own work. How could you? That paint was made a long time ago. But it's mine. I originally came up with. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Yeah, but uh, you're taking someone else's hard work for it. That's wrong morally and wrong illegally. And yeah. and don't forget, uh, you know, it's morally wrong. It's is you know legally wrong. And um, and last but not least, it's uh, it's wrong. It's just wrong. Also don't do it. Hmm? Also very uncreative. Yes, it is. Yes. There's, there's no creativity to it. So, you know, yeah. but also you have to remember, you know, imp impersonators who do voice acting and whatnot, they don't call it, you know, they, they basically do an impersonation, but they say they're impersonating others. That's not considered a fraud, but it's, it's, people are telling, hey, I'm impersonating this person, but they're good at it. It's not considered a fraud when you think about voice acting. It's not. It's a completely different ballpark. It's, it's, it's something else. It's art. It's, Drawing some over someone else's hard work, like your, like your pure example of just you know painting over the Mona Lisa and calling it your own painting. Mm -hmm. You're copying over someone who took hard, a hard, put in hard yeah. enough effort and a lot of time into it. Right. And you're just taking Microsoft Paint and just painting your OC so badly over it. Yeah. But anyways, let's get back to the subject. Yeah, let's, get let's, to, let's, yeah. let's get back to the subject at hand. And I, I want to thank Brandy for keeping us in line because right now it's, we keep we keep on getting pulled away because it's due to big issues, and that's that's not yeah. we're not that's not what we're here for. Uh, we're here for muffins. No, we're here for muffins. We're here for the muffins. All right. Oh, yes. Sweet and tasty muffins. Don't be too tasty muffins. Muffins, muffins, muffins. And we're back to work now. Um, let's kind of get to the last few questions here. Um, oh, yes, one of the good ones. Um, I hope it's all right with you. Um, what basically made you decide to continue on 
with what Crooked Tree started by starting Pink Amina Returns? It was basically just the way it just ended. It was, it left off with a giant cliffhanger. Like, like not on the Pink Amina blog itself, but on the Scootaloo yeah. blog. Where Pink Amina had left Scootaloo alone to try to to help Mrs. Cakes with another bakery in a different town. And it is, I already thought he was going to, that Kirk Trees was going to continue it from there, but time went on and absolutely nothing. It's yeah, like, it was just bad storytelling. It, you can't just. You know, you, you can end you can end it with something that it's basically leaving it open. But you know what? If you think about it, it was genius. Why? why I mean, the reason the reason the reason why I say that is because why not say that it's so open and let, leaving the torch for someone else to continue? Yeah. But the thing is, no, and nobody had did it. No one had to actually picked up the torch at all. No one. I think someone tried to. Yeah, and failed someone miserably. It wasn't ready for it. But you, you pulled it off. Yes, You're I'm pulling trying. It off very well. I'm trying and, and my I best. Commend it. So, and I commend it. Yeah. You're doing a damn fine job. So. Yeah, I have I have things planned out for that blog. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. But it's to the and point I hope that to but, see it. Yeah. But like I said, maybe he left it maybe he left it open to say, you know what, I'm tired of this. Someone else needs to take over. I will leave it open and do they can do whatever they want with it, I don't care. But I'm not saying that's as, as it is because I could, I, for all we know, he could be listening in. For all we know, we just don't know it. Just don't know. Because you know, I would love to get to interview Crooked Trees and actually find out what happened. What, you know, I mean, find out, you know, interview, do a full interview, but find out the real reason behind the whole entire leaving. Why he decided to just abandon something. So, something that was great. That got was it basically inspired a lot of artists. I mean, he, yeah, he basically he, created me. I mean, the Tumblrverse. He created the Tumblrverse. He's the creator. He is the three. Tumblr he, god. Yeah, he's one of the Tumblr gods, but he's one of three. Yes, he's one of the three. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really actually, actually, there's there's four, but you have Princess Nolestia, yes, uh, you know, Trees, um, LMR, and right now, Gonzo is pretty much almost there himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, I ended up starting out with all this because of Crooked Trees. I would love to know what basically drove him. I'm hoping it's not me. <laughs> I pray to God it ain't me. Oh, oh yeah, don't forget so about Rai. Who? The one Ray of, Ray of the The Ask McBlobs. The McChubbies. Oh. Oh, that one. The yeah. one who started the Safe for Work versions. Well, the original Safe for Work will always be MLP. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it. the Tumblr verse is open to any kind of pony, safe yeah. or not. Well, I always, this is this is one I always get a kick out of. And for people who do not know, and I'm going to repeat it once again, and I'll repeat it, you know, if we put it once, I'll repeat it once again. If, for people who do not know what Safer Work and, and, and Safer Work, if you see a little deal that says uh, SFW, it means Safer Work, which means that that artwork is between G to PG-13. Now, and not, yeah. and not, and not, that, that means all your little stuff that you have on My Little Ponies and every teenage uh, Disney channel that I ever had. Now, yeah, some examples of Safer Work will be... Um... Likewise, um, Lady Derby photos to an extent. Um, <laughs> um, um, are you sure about that? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I say to an extent. Um, the uh, uh, Specky C work of um, Ask Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. Um, the McBlobs is definitely one of them. Discord who's? Uh, not not nah, not not so much. Nah, not so much. Nah, nah, nah. Not so much. Uh, sketchy Twilight. Um, if it, um, actually, sketchy Twilight is to a point because there is no explicit sex, only some minor things. But she's generally just, you know, <laughs> she's generally safe. I I would assume. Yeah. 
But anyways, uh, but then you have is the NSFW, not safe for work, which basically is from rated R and beyond, which means gore, sex, all the sexual content, you know, and all the blood. And, I mean, your bloody, your bloody stuff, your fetishes, your weird ass fetishes, your furry, your furry <laughs> dome is starting to creep. Weird ass out. fetishes? I didn't know I had any weird ass fetish. Oh wait a minute, there was that one thing I do every Saturday. Oh wait a minute, there was that other thing I did it. Anyways, um, chocolate milk. Yes. Oh, <laughs> male mayor derpy. The real world is basically not safe for work. <laughs> it's like every time you take a shower, it's not safe for work. Yes, <laughs> basically that is it. That's basically where it's at right at this moment. But um, but like I said, uh, but to get to, to get out to the bare minimum, um, for those you know, if if you look at go to a Tumblr and he said that it's, it's say it's uh, you know, any of those sales. You know what it is. You know what it is, and there's no excuse. If you want to follow them, fine. Be you know, be expecting the worst of the worst if, for for not safe for work. But if it's strictly safe for work, then you know, by all means, you know, have fun with it. But remember, respect. If they're going to be safe for work, you need to be safe for work. If it's not safe for work, hell, anything goes. Yes. So also yes. respect. So back to where we were. What are the Tumblr gods again? Uh, happy trees. Uh, no, crooked trees. Sorry, crooked trees. Happy LMR. Trees. Sorry, I know. I know. Sorry, I know the people who. Thinking. Do you, you know the Happy Tree Friends? That little show. Oh yeah. Oh. I I I, I used to drink with with the guys who were the main creators of that show. They still go to the same bar every every Saturday night, but I won't get into that. Um. But yeah. Um, yeah, I can go on and on with all the not safe. Yeah, cr uh, cr cr Cricket Tree was going to be one of the, it's going to be the starter of all. So basically, it makes him a god. LMR, he has so many fans as is up to you at zoo. I've been to some of the streams that they had. There are people camping there, literally camping. camping. They're camping. They, away. They're they're basically he. So he is a god. He has his own worship people. Same thing with Princess Molestia. Like I said, soon to be Gonzo because Gonzo is almost yeah, there. Me. Yeah, but the thing is, he, you know, here's the thing: Gonzo is at this moment is a demigod. So basically, because, because not only do I have, not only have I reached, and uh, not sorry, not only have I reached 500 followers, and I'm trying to get a hold of someone to do a commission pick for that. Uh, so, uh, I did take your suggestion, but uh, she's a little bit busy at the moment. Um, I've also I'm about to check my, how many uh, subscribers I have on my YouTube channel because I can never go a day without seeing an email saying this person has subscribed to you. This person has subscribed to you. Uh, let's check at the current count. It's at four thousand nine hundred and forty-three subscribers. Mother of. Celestia, that is Lauren Faust. That was Lauren Faust. And I have over two, almost close to two and a half million views. Yeah. Video views. Yeah. But, we're, like I said, he's a demigod. He has to have more. They're expecting more, but uh, right now my Tumblr dubs are like on hold until I get a decent mic. Once that's done, the show will go on, and then it's going to be chaos. Chaos will rain, and it will rain chocolate rain. Yeah. And muffins. But anyways. And muffins. Back to work. Um, yes. So anyways, getting back to the nitty gritty. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Where was it? Where was it? My brain was derping for a second. Okay. Derp. Yes, derp. Um... It's so you 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 still are going to school, correct? Yeah, I'm in. This is my last year of high school. What's your friends think of your artwork? They think I'm obsessed with ponies, ah. but they like my my artwork nonetheless. That's always a good thing. It's always be no, always, it's always good to get approval. Me, they ask me to to teach them how to draw, I, like on the computer. Like you're gonna need a tablet, and they're like, "How much does it cost?" Like hundred dollars. Like, oh, let me just borrow yours instead. Right. This is mine. This is my baby. Right. This is my tablet, Dinky. Mm -hmm. My tablet's yeah. name is Dinky. 
<laughs> yeah. Cute. And this is my and this is my computer. My computer. And, I named it Toshiba. <laughs> and this I'm is Toshiba too. <laughs> Yay. This is my soda. Its name is Cola. Ooh. So what? I'm a soda holic. Uh, so am I. It's what keeps it's what keeps me going at night. It makes you it's, it makes you stop seeing those weird images in your head. I mean, those lighted images in your head. But anyways, here we go. One final thing. If you have you know, since all the uh, you know some of the artists are probably listening right now, or some of the newer people out there are listening, uh, you have any suggestions for any newbies out there? I would say to keep trying, to keep going at it. If you don't, if you don't think that you're that you're improving, then you really are. You just need to keep pushing at it. You need to push yourself. Draw things that you would never think of drawing. Like even if you're trying to have, to go in, to go into a profession of like animating cartoons, try drawing. Try drawing like your like your like your cup, your some flowers, it's going to help you. Yeah. Or how about the, the best way, and I think uh, Crooked Tree said it best. Do the best with what you have. Yes, do the best with, with what you have. Mm -hmm. I think Paper, that... pencil, marker, rock, stick, ketchup. <laughs> Wait, what was I talking about? Muffins. You're, you're... Muffins! Okay, now we're back to normal again. I love muffins. So, what we need to do now, we need to change gears. And yeah, lay dirt. And lay, yeah, we've got to change gears here, and we've got to move on to the next guest, which is our final and last guest, which is... So, for not, now, so yeah. It, yeah. So, anyways, Lady Derpy, we want to thank you for being here. We, we, we enjoy, enjoy your muffins. Go and enjoy, enjoy your muffins, muffins, because, I don't know, maybe we'll send you a welcome gift of muffins. Blueberry, I hope. Blueberry. Uh, yay. Either that, or, either that or sesame ones. But anyways. Oh, someone's asking about prom. Prom? Oh yeah, because Scotchy was supposed to be my date, but then he... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> no, no. Easy, easy. Want... easy. Well, okay. we won't get into that right now. So, anyways. It's a pleasure having you on here on the show. We'll probably get back to you. We'll probably get back to you later to find out what's going on. So, it's okay. So it's nice seeing you. So thanks for stopping on by. It was my pleasure. Yay! Later. Yeah, most interesting. Yeah, most interesting uh, of, of of Derpy there. I mean, we 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 met we met other Derpies. But this one was more more interesting because uh, she's really derpy in a way because she's all excited and happy go get lucky. So I think it's time to start to bring in our final guest. Uh, let me find out how she's doing it. Ugh. Uh, yeah, our last guest is none other than the voice actress herself, Lauren Goodnight. So. Hooray, the professional voice actress. Yay. Uh, while you're bringing her up, I'm going to use the restroom. Go ahead. I'm going to play a little bit of a song here, and uh, just for temporary for now. Okay. <laughs> Well, actually, I could probably add her to the call. It'd be a lot more easier. So, hey, let me pull up that picture real quick. Oop. Derp. All right, here we go, folks. We'll bring in Miss Lauren Goodnight. Go. 
Greens, Laura, how you doing? Hello, hello. It's Lauren, but yeah, hi. <laughs> or should we call you by your other name? Uh, what was it? Minuet. Minuet. No, I'm. I'm. She's not my pony, Sona. She's just a character I play. Ah. So, how you doing tonight? I'm quite well. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing pretty good so far. Having a little fun here every now and then. Just sometimes getting distracted, but that's kind of goes with the territories of ponies. It goes that, with the territory, absolutely. Yeah, you know, well, having those pinky moments, we just ramble on, ramble on about absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <sighs> so well, thank you, you for having me on the show. This no, is really the, cool. No, no, actually, thank you for actually uh, making it. It's actually really a pleasure. We've been dancing around each other for a while, so. Well, I think by now we kind of know how to do the tango, but that's besides the point. <laughs> but I think like a lot of people, a lot of your loyal fans are actually uh, really excited to see you here. So that's, I'm actually happy to see, see that going on. Um, I'm if, excited to be here. So. Yay! So, um, so how are you feeling? I heard you were in the hospital. Uh, no, uh, that wasn't me. That was that was my grandmother. I'm one of uh, my grandmother's caretakers, and uh, ah. She went into the hospital. I did have surgery recently, but I'm, I'm much, much better now. And But she went into the hospital, and uh, we were able to get her discharged within four or five hours. So I feel pretty good about that. Uh, you and me both. I, my my uh, grandmother stuck at, at, at the uh, at a nursing home for temporary for now until uh, we find out what's going on with her with her uh, rehabilitation tomorrow. So. See, Good. using a nursing home for rehab is great, but using it as as a as an actual place is is really terrible. It I, is. I, it's very. I really kind of hate. I kind of hate that our society has gotten to the point where it's absolutely okay for it to be so expensive to take care of our family members and take up so much time that. It, that the cost is prohibitive, and we have to put them in the care of of, uh, of professionals who we can't keep an eye on. And God. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I, I work I work in the health profession, so I um <laughs> I feel really bad having to say that because there are a lot of people. The majority of people who work in uh, nursing facilities are, you know, very nice people. But mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. yeah, I know exactly what you mean. My sister feels the same same exact way, and. It's like they you you go to school to learn all this stuff, and all of a sudden you're not taking your job seriously just because it uh, doesn't fit your criteria or anything on that. I mean, on, on that fact, it's a, it's not paying you enough. It's like yeah, it may be a job, but there's always you know it could be not have a job and basically being homeless on the street. You know what happened? Yeah. What happened? To, uh, you know gratitude towards others. You know to be hey, thanks for hiring me here. Thanks for bringing me. You know. Uh, Sometimes I wonder if Chivalry truly is dead. And I was like, eh, no, I'm still here. <laughs> uh, I, was I gone for that long? Because I could have sworn we was dealing with ponies. I'm sorry, but oh, we actually, yeah, we actually were. I was just was concerned about. I was just concerned about her grandmother, or her, her mother. Oh, uh, I, I, I don't want to seem sound heartless or anything. I was just coming back from the bathroom, and all of a sudden, why are they talking about the, uh, Fred? Uh, breasting homes and shit. I thought we was dealing with ponies. We are. I was like, yeah, was I gone that long? I only no, went one to the, the bathroom. Cool one <laughs> right. of the really cool things um, about the various shows I work on and, um, and the various people I know is that my mom, Mama Goodnight, has, has gotten involved in some stuff and people know who she is and uh, so and, and, and they know that I'm a... Uh, one of the people on my grandmother's care team, and so That's you know, I'm, I'm just very, very close with my fans, and a lot of my fans are actually my friends, and so I can't call them my fans because you know I would come to them when I'm having a migraine or when I want to throw my cat out a window because he's done something stupid again. So it's always nice to have friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. you gotta share. You gotta care. <laughs> There, I said it. There, Did I said it. Smile and get a smile. It's so Face. special. <laughs> okay, <laughs> getting back. To, so, are you an artist by any chance? I am. I work on the Ask Minuet blog. That's ask-minuet.tumblr.com. 
Um, and uh, I just recently did a donation drive with uh, Jitterbug Drive. And um, how's that work out? Really well. Really well. We raised over six hundred dollars, and I kind of needed it to pay some bills, so it was, it was wonderful. I got a lot of a lot of uh, commissions. Support. Yeah, I, I got a lot of support. I got a lot of practice in in drawing people's OCs. That was a lot of fun. I, I had a great time. So you do, do so you do do commissions. Um, special cases. Special cases. It's it's rare that I'll that I'll take a commission. If I know the person, I'll generally just do it for free. And I just feel, you know, it, it, it's weird to take people's money. But I love doing it. I love money. I, I, I think it's great. I'm very mercenary. <laughs> I just don't like to be um, – I don't like to have to have things do for people when it comes to art because art's sort of the way I get away from everything else. I see, I see. Oh, excuse me. Mm. Oh, wait, that's right. I am co-artist for um, Ask the Time Master. <laughs> I just haven't done my my parts on it. Your fair. Uh, yeah. Your fair share. <clears throat> well, I just got out of surgery. Yeah, give the girl a break, man. Yeah. But anyways, getting back to what we're going through. We were not here to interview an artist. We were here to interview a voice actress. Who's, who's who's done a some, quite you know some voice actory that pretty much would consider be where you where you consider yourself on voice acting. Um, I still take money to do it, so that's the definition of a professional. Yep. So what is what, what is it like to be a voice actress? Um, you have a different set of skills that you develop over time than you do for stage acting or for camera acting. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> those skills. If you're really good, and if you're working with a good writer, if you're working with a good team, you can express every single emotion the very same way as someone who can use their arms and hands and face. Kind of like Mark Hamill. I hate to, I hate to use that as yes. a... I, I, no, I, no, it's actually a perfect thing. I, I really look up to him. I also look up to the gentleman who voices SpongeBob. Um, I I think Tara Strong is hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, I look up to Tabitha Saint Germain, and I look up to uh, Gray Delisle. So, but it's really hard for me to look up to people I've met, like Johnny Young Bosch. Like I know him. I've gotten drunk with him. I've gotten drunk with him. Man, whatever. It's like Monica Rial. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Done tequila shots with her. Can't look up to. Her. <laughs> wow. Travis oh man, Will now this is weird. Travis this is Will weird. Him, I, you know, hanging out with Travis is awesome, and watching he and Monica do tequila shots one after the other, and then watching Monica win <laughs> was um. <laughs> this I mean, feels that's, weird. That's what I said. Oh you're, 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 for a while, you're fans. For a while, you look up to people, and then it's like, nah, uh, -uh. <laughs> they're just like me. This is weird. I remember. Let's see, Monica Ryle. Oh yes, Monica um, yeah, for ADV. Uh, she still works yeah. for them, and uh, but they're not ADV anymore. They're Section Twenty Three, and what is, what's uh, she Section also 23? works for Funimation as well. What is, okay, ADV. Yeah. What, what is Section Twenty Three? Uh, Section Twenty Three is the company that sort of rose out of the ashes of ADV. Uh, they're also, I think. See, see. Every time I think ADHD, I'm thinking of my of, the, of like ADHD. You know, the mental <laughs> no, disorder. No. They Ding. Did films. Uh, yeah. They yeah. did ADHD and oh, yes. Angelic Lair and uh, Rosalind pre. Uh, okay. Oh yes, and and Noir. If I remember right, you were yes. one of the background voices for Noir uh, with Monica that? Ryle. I remember that show, um, and I really liked it. Um, I really like the show itself, um, <clears throat> and now it just feels weird that you were <laughs> taking tequila shots because I was thinking now you're taking tequila shots with Kira. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I'm just. And, I'm well, just, the thing is, she is my... She is a grown ass woman. These people are grown up. We are all. Grown up. We are not our characters. <laughs> I know, is, but yeah. you're, it's hard. You think, it is hard. Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes you 
you, you don't think of the voice actresses themselves. You started thinking of the characters they voiced. Like you know, um, when you worked on a when you've worked on a cosplay costume with Tiffany Grant, it's like okay, life over. <laughs> oh. oh, excuse okay. me. Yeah, it, it's it's to the point where I I have a really hard time finding people that I look up to a lot, like really, 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 really desperately. And um, like Chrisman Freeman, I, again, I, I no, I, I I can't because I know him. <laughs> But, it's, it's like it's like you look up to them at first, you know, as these really high and mighty people, and all of a sudden you meet them in person, you're like, they're just they're like people. they're like they're just people like me and you. They're 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 no, they're, it's like they're no gods. <laughs> they're just, they they bleed just like me and you. Yeah, but when you think about it, you know, Tara Strong is an extraordinary actress. However, she is just a normal person. She likes trolling people just like everybody does, and. um you know, she's foul-mouthed, she's funny, she's a decent human being. And Princess Clara. I, I, yeah, I really look up to her acting skill. But as a person, she's a person. I'm a person. There are people I do look up to, you know, as a person. Right. But it's, it's those people are few and far between. And a lot of them are dead. <laughs> well, yeah. And uh, there's, at least you know that some of the voice actors are people, so that way you're pretty much on equal terms with them. Which also uh, which also brings up to, like, you know, you see these people on the street and you know them, please. Treat them as kind as, like, normal people. Don't go all flutter-gasm and everything. Unless, unless, you're, unless, you're, unless you're 12 and under. No, I've had that happen. It's, um, it's kind of creepy. Exactly. It it's, if, if it's different, it was kids. If it was yeah, kids. It ha- if it was kids, that's fine. But I haven't had it happen at a restaurant, but I've had it happen at my place of work, mm-hmm. like multiple times in various places of work, and I'm just like, no, 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 this is not happening. This is not going down at my place of work. But please, go away. <laughs> I, well, no. I mean, just... I, always, I always like meeting people, but I also like your privacy. rather meet people in a situation where I can get up and walk away, just because... I don't have a lot of social anxiety, but the social anxiety I have is, is you know, it, it, it's the kind yeah. where I would be able to get up and walk away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes absolute sense. Uh, but I mean, for the for the most part, on the, uh, I mean, I, I, I've worked in Hollywood many times before. I have worked with actors like Michael Manson, uh, Manson and uh, Gary Sergio, and uh, uh, Vincent Pastor, um, and few others but they're not really worth me even mentioning um i worked with people like those and they're they're just like like you said they're every average joe they're they're you know they're like me you anybody they just you know they like their privacy just like everyone else um but how do you avoid it on the most part when it when, it, when, it, when you also knows you know the crowd that basically notices you how do you avoid it do you run do you act all incognito no no um I look different than I did when I was, you know, doing stage work and voice work consistently and professionally. Um, you know, I've gained some weight. I've changed my hair color. I no longer wear glasses. Um, so you're always changing your disguise, and there's no one, and only you yeah. know what you really look like. <laughs> only I know what I really look like. Um, no, it, 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 kind of, it kind of goes with your IMDb that there's no photo to it. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, there's not going to be a photo to it unless, you know, something amazing happens. And my IMDb is wrong. They have me down as someone who was in Zombie Cheerleader Massacre. And I'm like, which, which I you weren't. in Zombie Cheerleader Massacre. No, you weren't. I, mean, I, I, did, I, did, I did some research that on that. That would have been a great paycheck, but no. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe you should look for that paycheck. <laughs> maybe you should look for that paycheck. Maybe you should go maybe over that. It's like, maybe, maybe you should like, hey, where's, where's my check? You, you said you, you said my voice was using it. And, I didn't get permission, so where's my royalty check, please? And I'll be on my way. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But let's not get into that. Let's get in more into your whole entire acting persona. Okay. I, I, I understand what it takes to actually be a voice actor to a certain point, but what makes you different from everyone else? 
what makes you special on being a voice actor? That's a really, really good question, and it requires a bit more of an ego than I have to be able to answer it. But um, what I can say is I've been doing it a really long time. Um, I think I did my first radio commercial when I was seven, and then I didn't do anything, and then I did some stage, and, and I've sung my whole life. And you know, I've sung in choir. I was in a tap state choir. That's Texas, mm -hmm. Texas Association of Private and Parochial Schools. And I was in, oh, I, I, I did, you know, dancing and singing and choreography in college, but that's not what my degree is in. And, um, you know, I sang in gay bars for money in Houston back before I was an actor. And uh, it, doing that, being able to express emotion to people at the back of a club who can't see you, who are not looking forward to seeing you, who are trying to mack on the twink in the corner is really, really impressive. And, and when I learned that I could do that, I was, I was, I was sort of, I was sort of happy with myself and um, I decided to get better at it. And then I quit for a while after I worked with ADV and after I worked with Antarctic press, I um, completely withdrew from acting and from the anime world. I decided I wanted to be a nurse and I wanted to help take care of my family and I wanted to do this and that and the other. And that was, that was great. That was great for a while. But when you're somebody's caregiver and then they die in the same hospital you're trying to do your clinicals in, it just, it ruins you and it ruined me. And I realized that I enjoyed writing and I missed it and so I got back into writing and one of my writing partners said hey there's a show you have to see I'm like no no I really don't have to see that I swear to God I do not have to see that no really you have to see it I said, no I, I really don't have to see it I, 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 I had ponies when I was young I had all of the G1 ponies when I was young I, I, I really don't ever need to see ponies again it's like no you will sit down and you will watch this and she tricked me into watching an episode and... <laughs> so basically you were forced against your will and all of a sudden yeah. from basically from basically to f turn from can't even use the word force rape to basically no, to willing afterwards yeah and uh, I, I figured <laughs> out well I I can do these voices. I can do a lot of these voices. And I can do them well enough that I can, you know, have fun with it. Now, when, so, you, when, so when you found out when Tara, Tara, uh, uh, Tara Strong was one of the voices, what was your first impression? Well, I actually haven't met anybody on the voice uh, cast other than John Delancey. Oh, and yeah. So that, that was cool when when he got cast. I was just like, yes, yay, yes, yay, <laughs> and um, I just loved it. Uh, I I loved what she did with the character. I think it's funny because a lot of people say, oh, you don't sound enough like this character. Oh, you don't sound enough like that character. But if you listen to the whole show. The actors do portray the characters with different tonal ranges throughout the two seasons. Yeah. Especially Rarity. Especially Rarity. Rarity goes through four different accents. And so I chose one and, you know, 70% of people like it and 30% of people can tune into something else. Interesting. Um, if you had to choose a favorite between the main six, who would it be? <laughs> Rarity. <laughs> and why? Um... Probably because I'm the most like her. In real life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, okay, let's get into the next part. Um, now, what started you... Okay, what started you... Because right now we're running short on time. Because uh, mm -hmm. we have 15 minutes. Because I like to end the show at least about by 10 my time. Uh, with Vinuet, what started with her? Well... I'm a huge Whovian, like disgusting huge Whovian, and I've been a Whovian for years. I just, I loved that there was a Doctor Who tie-in with My Little Pony, and I saw Colgate, and I was like, eh, no big deal, but then I saw 
the toys for her, the, the um, glitter pony that was done out in China, the promo pony, whatever, minuet. And I ordered her, and I have her, and she's beautiful. She's just, she's gorgeous. And I said, okay. Cool. So have to tell this story. Have to tell the story. And so I just happened to know Jitterbug, and um, through Jitterbug, I met uh, Time Master. I met Warden, and we all sort of decided this is what this character is going to be. This is what the storyline is going to be, and this is why it's going to be, you know, a a sort of tragic, overarching storyline. And why is it worth three blogs? Well, y'all will see. I bet. I can already picture it as it is already. <laughs> Could be awesome. Uh, even though that we, me and you and Gonzo know, whew, this is going to be uh, epic. But oh we won't. We, we won't get the into that. Hilarious. Oh my god. Huh? The chat's hilarious. Of course. <laughs> I told him to go out. Like no, my 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 love. For what? Roger Delgado stays within my heart. <laughs> Anyways, um, so let's get more into your whole pony. Pers- okay, we're going into your pony persona. Um, why did you, why uh, did you become a brony? Well, it was mostly because my friend showed me that, and it was really amazing. And um, what really pushed me into being a brony, as opposed to anything else, <clears throat> was I tried out for the Fiends of Dream Valley game. And that was the first thing I had auditioned for since I had given up professional acting. And I was treated with all of the same love and tolerance as every other person who tried out for that game, i.e. not very much. And um, then I realized, wait, this is not the only bag out there. There's a lot more out there, and, and, and it's good, and it's better than this, and, and, and there are games that are getting made, and, and it's beautiful, and art, there's so much art, and there are stories everywhere, and music, oh god, music, maybe I could make brony music, and it just went downhill. So basically, you were trying different ideas to see what works for you, and basically drawing is one that's really stuck with you the most, is that correct? Uh, drawing and, and singing, I do a lot of, of um, brony songs. It sounds, it it sounds like you and Gonzo need to get together on this. <laughs> so what? Why? Um, so you can do yeah. some, some, some of your own little, t- you know, every time you have a scene uh, part that needs to be done, you can hire Laura here. I, uh, let's see. I have a song on the Seeds of Kindness album that I did with Cyril the Pony, Cyril Lyric, and um, it's called Smile. And it's not Smile, Smile, Smile. It's, it's a different song. It's oh, a beautiful, just... beautiful song. Uh, that should be cool. And let's see, uh, we're down to the final stretch. Um, Customs, never mind. Huh? <laughs> Damn you, Tyronis. Anyways, um, what are you, I mean, what are your thoughts on the safe work and not safe work? Um, I have an interesting take on that. Because my show just went national, the the um, eight bit sex, which is a love, sex and relationship show made for adults, and I believe that it's okay to be into a kid's thing, like My Little Pony, something that's generally geared towards it. Mm-hmm. But since we are adults and we are creating our own content, there's nothing wrong with it being not safe for work as long as you label it as such and make sure that the youngins don't get a hold of it. Don't do anything illegal. I'm cool with it. Indeed. Hmm. That was interesting. But yeah, super excited. Super excited. Going national in about a month and a half. Woohoo! Yay. Yeah. 
Um, any tips for any of the uh, people out there who are wants to get into the professionalism? Um, if you're frustrated and angry, because I come across that a lot, because um, my friends, you know, I'm, I'm friends with Pierce Smolder. I'm friends with, you know, Rena Chan follows me on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Which I've been in contact with myself. Yeah, she, she's a sweetheart. She's really awesome. We're, we're on a lot of projects together, but we don't talk. <laughs> well, not personally. When we get when we get cast for something based on our reputations and our work ethic, a lot of younger actors get pissed off because they say, how are we ever going to compete with that? Well, the, the only way to compete with that, I mean, I'm 31. Mm -hmm. I didn't start out with a name. I made it. I built it years ago and I got it back through more hard work. Hey, you're an 80s child like me. Yeah, I am. But mostly everyone here probably is from the 90s. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm late. I was in the 80, I was in 89. Mm -hmm. Well, you're still an 80s kid then. So I, yeah, it's, it's... I just don't feel down about it. I understand how bad it feels when you're not chosen for a role because there have been a lot of roles I've not been chosen for. But instead of getting angry and flouncing, what it should do, what it does if this is your passion, whether it's in art or music or acting or um, singing, it, it, any kind of performing art, or even if it's you know working in the health professions, if it's doing better at your retail job, if it, yeah, whatever it is, instead of getting angry and flouncing because, ugh, I should be given this or I should be, you know, considered for that. Work harder. Let right. that anger, let that anger and that righteous fury that you know you're better than the person who got cast, let it fuel you to actually get better than the person who was cast. Right. Well, that's just some, that's some really good words right there. That's strong. You know, I've, I've been doing it for years. Yeah, you have been. And I've, I've, I've had a lot of roles I didn't get that I really, really wanted. And I was bitter about it, and I was angry about it, and then I was like, well, fuck y'all. Yeah. I'm going to get really good. Well. I'm like really, really good. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you ever think about going back into it? Uh... I like being able to pick and choose my projects. Yeah. I like being able to set my own timelines. Oh, it's always great. It's always best. It, that's the best thing about being freelance. But you set your I, own. You set your own time, your own place, and whatnot. Exactly. Yeah. But um, I am pretty much back into it. When my show goes national, I will be, you know, drawing a regular paycheck, not just a commission paycheck. I'll Smart. be insured. I, I, will, I will be a radio host, which is... Kind of like me, different. yours truly. <laughs> yeah, on real radio. Yeah. On FM, AM, Satellite XM. It's going to be all over the net as well. And I'm, I'm very, very excited. The show we're doing now is 8-Bit Sex, and we're going to upgrade it. It's going to be Good Night Sex, and I'm bringing the whole crew with me. Awesome. My co-host is coming with me, and our intern, Marie, is coming with us. And I'm just very, very excited. You know, it's it's hard work, but it's worth it. Yeah, we it's should absolutely get... worth it. If, you know, I've wanted to be in radio and in entertainment in a real way, making a real difference for most of my life. And to get that, that's usually what what it's all about when you're doing live live broadcasting or doing any type of radio deal is is making that difference in people's lives because. Your voice could change the world if it needs to be. If you give that one bit of word of advice, it basically gets that person throughout the day, throughout the week, or for the rest of their lives. And by encouraging them, by giving them that positive attitude, it's going to make sure that it gets through. Yeah, and, and that's one of the perks of doing a sex show. Not a show with a bunch of sex in it, but a show about sex. Is that we live in a culture that is very kink shaming is very anti sex is very anti finding yourself mm -hmm. because it's easier to control a person who is unstable and unsure of themselves right and what i'm out there to do is this is this is your most 
in this is the most one of the most intense physical and emotional things that you get yourself into that has to do with yourself and other people and I want people to know that they're not weird they're really not weird they may have been told they were weird their entire lives they may have been disowned by their parents for being gay it doesn't matter you're not weird you're not particularly different and that's okay mm -hmm. So that's the point of having. That's the point of my entire show, and that's the point of. So what? So what's the name of your show again? My master's degree, and it's called uh, Eight Bit Sex. Right now, it's called Eight Bit Sex. It's on EightBitX.com radio network every other Friday. Uh, when we move to satellite radio, we will be called Goodnight Sex, and we will be on every Friday for three hours, starting at nine p.m. Eastern. All right, you heard her. You know, if you want to, basically. Listen to her radio and go, you know, she just gave me the information. And hopefully she, uh, she'll get, send me some information. I'll probably post it up there for you guys so you all know what it is. So you can follow, and follow her on that. So, Laura, I want to thank you again for being part of the show here. I appreciate it. You, you are excellent. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a real pleasure actually getting a professional's point of view compared to the secondhand stuff. So. So, oh, you're, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. And, you know, I, I hope somebody takes what I've said to, to heart. Uh, you, no, matter, no matter what it is, I hope someone picked up some of it and, and took it to heart. Oh, you better believe it, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gonzo. <laughs> I, think you, uh, I, I, I think you may need to get your, your hands out of your pants over there, Gonzo. <laughs> <laughs> Gonzo, you've been caught again. All right, folks, everyone. I was thinking something else because I've, I've started out. Gonzo, Gonzo, let's quit while you're still ahead. Quit while you're still ahead. I was trying to say, I was starting out as a voice actor, actor, and I'm trying to be better at it myself. So I'll be taking your consider your considerable advice to heart. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, you know, get involved with Stanislavski method. I, I like Stanislavski method as opposed to the method that's generally taught, which is, um, I can't remember her name, the woman who took method and made it sort of international. Uh, I like the original method better. So, yeah, get into method. Listen to a lot of old radio shows. Like all that stuff is 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 available on the internet. All that stuff is podcast now, and it is. a lot of it's free. It is. You know, listen to the shadow and listen to you know everybody, you know. Like listen to how everybody talks, Jeff and Benny. and it's yeah. you know. And if you want to be like really freelance, watch Howard Stern. Uh, but if you really oh, want, oh, I you know I wouldn't be going national if it weren't for Howard Stern. <laughs> there See? would not be no there. No, would no, be no I definitely agree. That's, that's how. Radio if it weren't for Howard Stern, yeah. So. Freedom of speech, my man. Freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Power to the people. Um, I, I am, I'm not against the FCC. It has its place. Mm -hmm. But I am very much against overregulation. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I love internet radio. I love satellite radio. Yeah. And I love my fans. And I can't wait to see you guys later, especially since it's uh, 10 o'clock your time and you probably want to go to bed. Well, it's time to shut off. And people, I want to thank for everyone for being here. Uh, you know, Laura, all the other guests, you're, you've been excellent hosts. Let's hopefully talk later sometime. But right now, we have to close the stream. So, people, I want to thank you all for showing up and being a, a great host.